Go. I've been away for seven months. Now they are filming the Book of Boba. Ooh, fight scenes, makeup. The one thing I've really missed is this hidden gem. Here in my hometown, Rotorua. Ah, the Polynesian Spa. Come on, New Zealand, try something new. Ah, there are no words. What is going on, Bombad fam? Look at this. Look at this thumb. Look at this thumbnail. We are going to be getting so absolutely freaking weird. I am so stoked about today's episode. It is your boy. It is Scotty Joe, the king of streaming four hours straight. Yes. Hopefully you saw yesterday. I played some Mario 64. If you didn't, you know where to go to look for it. What's going on, y'all? Super happy to be here. Super happy about our guest. Super happy about a lot of things, but before I do any of that, I got to plug this. Every Monday, every Monday, if you want a fun conversation, okay, if you want a spontaneous conversation, if you want something special, this is who you come to. Jerry freaking Cable, my dude. He had an amazing hyperfocus this past Monday. It was an absolute highlight of my week, and I think it could be a highlight of your week as well. Every Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, every Wednesday, you got... This fool right here, Scotty Jero with Bombad Gaming, come and hang out with us here. Uh, last night I did a four-hour pizza stream, which I have a video coming out on, I think, Saturday or Friday, maybe tomorrow, I don't remember. A video is dropping, though, of the highlights from that, so look forward to that. With all that being said, you know who's talking. It's the most handsome Bombad member, Jar Jar. So with that being said, let me bring in my wonderful, wonderful co-host, um, the Ewok of Star Wars podcasting, the one, the only, Gerald MF and Cable. Baby, what's going on, Jerry? Sup, baby? You know, I, I'd have to say the most, actually the most good-looking of the Bombad team, I think would have to be Eric Cotterman, honestly. Oh, you think so? If, I mean, if we're just if, if we're just going to get down to brass tacks. <laughs> you I think? Mean, just that the, the man is sexy flannel graph Jesus. I mean, we've said I've said this since day one. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm Let's just see, saying. Let's see if I forget what Eric looks like. Let's get Eric up. Let's get Eric up there on the screen. Yeah, right there. there you go. Well, look at him. That's look Eric. At that. Look at that. Being spoken to. This is Eric listening. That's how he listens. But yeah, Eric is a handsome that's one. Face, that's the face Jesus makes every time you sin, actually. Yeah. Right you there. know what else? We also have a, a freaking wonderful guest. One of our we very do. first listeners. Okay, get this. Not many of y'all know this, but at one point, Bombad Cast was not a popular show. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. Right, right. At one point. What? At one point. One right. point, people didn't listen to us. It was our first episode, and there was always one, okay? And this one came out the woodwork. I don't know where the hell he came from. He didn't know Jerry. He didn't know me. He wasn't a family member. But by now, I would say he's more than a family member. He is more than a woman. He's actually a man. More than a woman with three eyes. My boy, my good friend, a wonderful friend of the show michael ars michael mccoy if you will he sounds like a star trek character name yep that's me they did call me bones <laughs> in high school 
Do they really? Uh, yeah. Oh, when I, I went love to a that. new high school, the first two friends I made, I no joke, they were named Kirk and Scotty. I was going to say you need wild. you got to have a gym though so you go damn it gym. <laughs> like you got to <laughs> They were missing a gym, gym unfortunately. Got to have oh, one James. Got to have one. Michael, this feels like a very it feels very cyclical. Bombad cast has been going on for 2 years now and you were kind enough to post like your very first take from Bombad cast along like from 2 years ago back in 2019 before we had all become these you know these close friends hell Jerry and I weren't even that close at that time. And you know, through still the, aren't. <laughs> yes, through the through the challenges of life, we've become closer. And you know, Michael, you've been there every step of the way. Really, I mean, you have been, and, and we are very thankful for you. It's true. But why us, Michael? What made you prey on us? I don't understand. What were we? What are we so good for? Like, what what about this? What made you want to do this? And, and yes, and, Michael, tell us, tell us, Michael. <laughs> well, I mean, the chaos and positivity, as I've said, that your show brings is just. Uh, okay. Absolute delight, and um, okay, keep going. I, I, <laughs> Jerry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> don't don't stop. Good please. start. It's a good start. <laughs> uh, if I don't say things good enough, they'll kick me off the show. Oh, well, you no know, pressure. You know, no one pressure. thing too. I think I think part of it came down to the fact that like when we joined. I mean, you'd been there before the BTBD network, but when we joined and we did Force Connect, like I just felt your presence more after that and everything. And it was really awesome. And, you know, the fact that we can have you on and hang out now is just so brilliant. It's just yeah. awesome. The network got me plugged in a whole lot more with just the community mm -hmm. in general. I got more active on Twitter. I We started flying in Voodoo Squadron together. We would mm -hmm. do Force Hell Connect, yeah, like you said. Uh, and that just got me engaged a whole lot more. And yeah, I'm a... Uh, I went from a regular listener to now I listen every single week. See, that's, I, I love that about you is, and you're honest about it too. You know, like uh, some people like, I listen all the time. Like I tell Pete that. And I like, I had, I've been like not listening to Pete's episodes like for the like, past two, three weeks. And he's like, how are they going, Scott? And I'm like, they're great, Pete. <laughs> I mean, he's watching right now. He's, but it's he's just, not it's in just yet. how it is. Not in yet. We're yeah. And the good thing is, I think, I think in this community where, you make your own content. Of course, we make our own content. And like, it's almost impossible to keep up with everyone's stuff. But it just, it just really is. And that's okay. I think it's good to be honest about that. And the fact that we've got these people in the chat that also make their own content, it's just, it's fantastic. It, it's great. And I'm so glad that, you know, through our creativity, whatever we'd call this, that we found a friend like you, man. It's just, it's a wild Aww. adventure. And it is, I especially because I, I didn't like follow either of you before. For Bombad cast, and somehow you guys ended up in my feed, and two years later, here we are. Right. So right. weird. And like, you know, it's so funny. Jerry and I, for a while, for like the first year or so, before we did the video podcasting and, and you know, seeing everyone here being active, right? We used to think we were screaming into the void until people like you were like, oh no, you had a great episode. I was like, what? Well, well, uh, if I may interject yeah. here real quick. Uh, Michael, did you not send in a voice message for our uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull episode? Or am I thinking of someone else? Alex David uh, did. I, know I did Alex not did, do Kingdom I... of the Crystal Skull. Um, did you I know not? that one, he did the for... one year. Yeah, the one he did year. One year, stay, one year staying bombad. He told me what it meant to be right. bombad, Jerry. I that. I always for some reason there was I forget who it was that said the thing about like how people are always going for Indiana Jones' crotch. Um, in every, I, in every movie. I, thought, I thought it was Mike. I thought it was Michael. I thought it was Michael. I've attributed it to you all these years, so you know, all these much many like, two years, much like the famous quote from Shaggy, not the cartoon character, it wasn't me. So, um, that's just that's Michael. That was a terrible joke. Um, Michael, you have brought some things to us today. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, let me get the thumbnail pulled right back up. Bring it I, up. Bring I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, I'm up on my Star Wars stuff, but this just looks batshit crazy. And I'm just gonna be straightforward with you. Look at look at this. And stuff. Needs more, laser, needs more laser eyes, in my opinion. We'll get there, Jerry. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> I'm just so there's confused. A, there's a severe lack of laser eyes uh, on guess, those tri triclopses and oculuses and whoever. Oculus well, Rift. Before we get to the heavy, nitty-gritty detail of all this, um, I, I think it's I think it must be said, because it's Michael's very first episode, and I think everyone knows what that means. It's a rite of passage here at Bombadcast. 
Um, Jerry, what's the best part of waking up? I would think it's a little bombad in your cup. This is your wake up call. Time to reach. Go for it all. Vulture stirs inside of me, and I know what I can be. Limit is the sky. Hey, world, watch me fly. Oh my Beautiful. god! I'm I cry every time. <laughs> I'm still conf I'm still confused. Why a circus? Why trapeze artists? <laughs> why why the head shake, Paul? Why? why why? I mean, I just I still don't know. I still don't understand what any of it has to do with coffee. I guess if you don't have enough caffeine, you're gonna drop your partner. Um, <laughs> I don't know. But, oh, all but, yeah, I know there it is. is all I know is that the energy of that video and maybe another one of these videos feels equivalent or if not more than what we're about to discuss today. And I just, <laughs> I, I'll play more videos later. I want, I want Michael to bestow upon us his knowledge of this series because I think Michael's made a career. I mean, we've got Matt Martin now, like, talking to you on that's it. true he did respond it's to my super so weird. it's so weird look at this i won't be joking it's okay in the boop. Fun oh, it's I all right, it. boop. Really love you i get it i get it so michael play um i have one tidbit of knowledge that i want to share before michael has his entire t t it's going to be a lot like a college like lecture today for michael yes. so we'll be sitting there we'll be chewing gum we may smoke cigarettes we'll see it depends on what year you went to college but um i got some death I, sticks here right here. yes we've got death sticks we've got reefer no we don't have any reefer um so um who calls the it reefer, reefer. So, Sorry, Michael, I want to say one thing. I think you have the posters behind you. Michael, can you move your beautiful head over just a little bit? Okay. For y'all that don't know, and for y'all that may know as well, the art on these posters, which is sh shocking to me, okay? The magnificent – there we go. Look at Let's look at that. Drew look Struzan that. Oh. worked on these. Drew Struzan didn't even do Heir to the Empire. I don't know if he did Shadows of the Empire. Look at those. He worked on these. And I wait, go. Let me see that. Is that is that Hoth Leia, but not Leia? No, that is that is the protagonist of this series, Ken. But it's that is photoshopped on the Hoth Leia's body. Is it not? It does look well, shockingly similar. Uh, I don't know if I'd say Photoshop. No, no, no. Necessarily, but like you look know, Drew Struzan probably was inspired. Maybe by Hoth Leia. Who Look isn't? Flowers. Look at the flowers. Okay, Michael. Scotty, tell us what you tell us what you really think about that. Ah! <laughs> I thought you meant that for serious. <laughs> oh, I got you. I so got you. You really did get me. Um, no, don't Zorba. worry. Not, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not, not yet. That, that's, that's towards the end. Uh, Zorba the Hut's the only thing I'm aware of in this series, and I love that Zorba the Hut is a bearded hut. I just I don't even know, frankly, where his origins are. But Michael. We're going to let you have the podium this evening and we'll, we're going to ask questions like a typical college course. This might be, it feels like nerd Academy. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to <laughs> channel the nerd Academy podcast with Jared Connor, but I will give you the floor. Michael, when did these books come out? Cause I really don't know. So that is, uh, that was actually one of the first points I wanted to bring up. I've got a okay. few, a uh, few fundamentals. And I would also Look like to this. say this, this might be a two parter for anyone watching. Because oh, it will be. be a lesson for us. No doubt. It's going to be a two parter. <laughs> <laughs> this man, this man has been doing like I talked to him after hyperfocus. He's been working on research all week, like yeah. for, wow. I think longer than I reread. I love this. Several of these books. I've got pages of notes. All right, Michael. Um, we'll let you. Have this the is floor, a professional. Man. This is a professional. A true but, professional. Uh, not only can Scotty and Jerry ask questions. If you in the chat, oh yeah, any questions, they'll bring them up. So can I uh, raise my hand? Hey. Jerry and I will raise our hands when we have questions. So okay. You can, you can also, I will also guys, <laughs> like and share this, please. Let's get let's get more people yeah, please. Please. so we can get more questions about this. This gonna is going to be one of the craziest episodes of Bomb Bad <laughs> Cast you ever will see. <laughs> Seriously, and that's Bring coming from on. someone who listens to most of these episodes. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, Michael, hit us with your best shot. All right. Um, the first thing you need to know about these books is that they came out in 1991 and 1992 between 
Okay, go. I'm not sorry. I'm, that that already has me interested. Scotty, all for six Corn of Sin. these books came out between the second and third books of the Thrawn trilogy. Jesus, that's a lot of writing. Well, they're less than a hundred pages each, and they've got oh. illustrations. These are kids' books. They're are they short stories? They are. They're not short stories, really. Okay. They're um, these books are written at a fourth grade reading level um, okay. that for ages like eight to twelve. Um, so that's also an, an important thing to keep in mind when we're making fun of these is that we are not the target audience. Um, and I would like to say we're laughing with these books rather than at yes. Well, yes. I mean, was it George? George himself was like, I, these, I, I made this for I want a guy with oh. three eyes. I think that sounds uh, uh, that sounds like he'd be a bad guy's son. I, I, I have mean, more uh, questions about that too because I know George really wasn't involved with Thrawn all that much, but this could be a different story. But anyway. So um, 91 and 92. Damn. Yeah. Um, another thing to bring up, there is some genuinely good stuff in these books. Not much, but there is okay. some. <laughs> and we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, also, all of these books have strong environmentalist messages. Every single one has its own like eco No way. Message. It's, it's, really? from, it's, it's from, <laughs> dude, it's from the early 90s. It's, it that, is. That is prime captain planet time. i was gonna say it's oh, captain oh planet. Yeah, good point damn i am just saying just saying. like i will get to it i guess i'm just curious in terms because i what if i use this as teaching method i teach environmental science maybe i'll use this as a method I your students would make fun of these books but we'll see <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go <laughs> um and the last thing i want to say about these books is that they're easy to find and they're cheap if you oh, want to get okay. your own copy of these, they are dirt cheap to find copies of on really? eBay and whatnot. So oh, sick. let's let's corner the market on these books, please. <laughs> yeah, let's get the value up on these. Let's do an N what's it called? An N NTF or NF whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll do an NFT on these books on the on the original transcripts of them. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry. Oh my lord. But uh that's it for fundamentals. Now we can okay. start going book by book, breaking Woo! down the book. If y'all are ready, I'm ready. Jerry's having fun on his phone. I'm more than ready. trying to do a show. I'm more than ready. This is what I do in like class. That. No worries. This is what I do in class. So the first uh, book in this series, excuse me, is the Glove of Darth Vader. <laughs> okay, that name alone, my favorite, and the the only one uh, I know anything about. Oh really? So oh, you know, I don't know anything about this one. I really don't. I know. I know this much. I listened to a podcast about it. That's about ah, it. Okay. So. The story of these books, the plot, the inciting incident. This is actually going to sound way cooler than the rest of this series is. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, that's awesome. Uh, so this group called the Prophets of the Dark Side are starting to like gain power in the Empire because mm -hmm. they will like prophesy events and manipulate things politically so that they happen. Oh, that's kind of cool. And they unveil a new prophecy about uh, who will succeed the emperor. And they say that uh, whoever uh, finds and wears the glove of Darth Vader on their right hand. <laughs> I should also say these books take place a year after Return of the Jedi. Oh, wow. Um, now, wait, did Vader's... It didn't get burned, did it? I guess it's part of the mystery. So, well, I'll, I'll Cause say cause it, it's not a mystery. Okay. Um, Darth Vader's right glove is indestructible. You didn't know that, <laughs> fake fan? You fake fan. So like just the right one. Robot arm. Okay, sure. Yeah, just just well, the right because one. there's some sure. retcons involved. Um, where sure. it's a Mandalorian gauntlet originally, or something. Oh, that's kind of sick. And um. Another retcon they added was that the glove was built around one of Lord Khan's Sith amulets. <laughs> <laughs> so is it like the Infinity Gauntlet? It's just it's just it just holds power. Uh no, it's just a glove. It's just it destructible. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a glove, Scotty. Don't be an it's idiot. A, it's it's just a glove, but it's just really good, really good Mandalorian leather. Yeah, like, yeah. Like like, like Corinthian leather. It's made from a, uh, I don't know. I can't even make a joke right now. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, it, it makes a lot of people confused because they're like, but the Death Star blew up. So what is there? Yeah. But we'll get to it. Um, so 
<laughs> we'll get to the things that did house later on. Um, Not quite. Oh, oh sizzle. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned and find out. Um, so uh, the book starts with our heroes. R2-D2 and C-3PO are going to get sent on a mission to go to Kessel where there is a large gathering of Imperials there and the Rebel Alliance wants to... Oh, sorry, not the Rebel Alliance. a subdivision of the Rebel Alliance called SPIN, which stands for... (laughs) I'm just watching Scotty cringe at everything I say. I I don't remember this part. Yeah, they work for the... Might uh, as well. SPIN! Did they have their own, like, like theme song and stuff, too? (laughs) uh, It stands for the Senate's Planetary Intelligence Network. Which is not fitting because it's not based on a single planet, so I don't know why it's planetary. <laughs> yeah. So you could, so you could, but 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 the person who did this was like, all right, so it's this, it's the blah 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 planetary blah blah blah, spin for short, spin. Yeah. Okay, and then like, <laughs> like, I sorry, I spent I spent all my time uh, on the on the song and dance number. I didn't think anything else out. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> the other thing you will come to realize is this book or this book series rather loves acronyms they will throw acronyms in whenever possible at the weirdest moments and we'll there's, get some more of them later there's it is a weird thing, obsession I've, if there's one thing i've always wanted from star wars it's more acronyms please <laughs> well these books are for you jerry <laughs> yes yes <laughs> sir, yes your brother has come maybe someday you far. can make it as well sir maybe someday uh oh yeah and then they uh yeah. You know, if you're reading a, a book based on the original trilogy, what characters would you guys want to follow? Just hypothetically. Like, what hypothetically, characters do you want to see more? Luke. Of? Luke. Okay. Jerry? Yeah, I mean, the, the main three, you know, you're always like, if, if I'm in that time period or something. You see, know? I like Luke. I, I'm not sure about the other ones, and neither of the, the authors. So what happens is Han Solo gets immediately written out of the book. Um. This is the first one. You can see it. Is he on the cover? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, you've got to you've got to sell the book, Scott. You've sure, sure, it. sure. But so on page ten, he gets he up. gets written out because he wants to go build his sky house on Cloud City. I'm gonna I'm gonna read a brief excerpt, please. Of, of please Han's do. Dialogue. I love this so much. That's <laughs> for the Sith washroom. <laughs> That's incredible. But here's a bit of, of Han's dialogue. Lando's offered me a lease on a piece of sky near Cloud City. I've always dreamed of having a place of my own, and I figured it's about time Chewie and I built my dream sky house. Chewie? Chewie, Chewie is like <laughs> his his contractor? That's I guess. Incredible. No, he no, he and Chewie are gonna build this together. <laughs> right? Leia, is that <laughs> Leia tries to talk him out of it, but he's like, nah, I gotta do this right now, man. <laughs> what? I gotta, oh I, my god. Got a hot, I got a hot deal on a piece of sky right now. I gotta <laughs> yeah. go. I gotta <laughs> jump on it. I gotta it, bounce. Man. I gotta it's bounce. It's real estate. It's real estate. Oh my god. So uh <laughs> 3PO Page and R2. 11. <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> That's so oh, early. <laughs> Page 11. Ooh. That's it. So can I have can I, can we have? I'm sorry, can we have the uh, 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 extreme home makeover, but Han and Chewie edition or whatever, Solo where they're just floating like around that, in skies. Like he's like up there, just like building it with Ugnots or something. Like it's just like going to be like a, a house on a platform. But like I want this. I want someone. Please animate <laughs> well, this. Want, please animate. If you want this. Drew Struzan's version? Uh, oh no, that's it on the back of Zorba the Hutt's revenge. Well, that's kind of sick. It's very. No! It's very modern. Very very good, Han. Very good. Yeah, he's, he did a hey, good if, job if, of building his sky house, I guess. If Lando can have a palace and Darth Vader can have a castle, God, God darn it, so can Han Solo can have a place. Yeah. All right. <laughs> sky house. Oh, yep. God. That's what Han's doing in this book. <laughs> no, it is not Han dialogue. And I yet, just met, I can you imagine the Barbie crossover that could happen with this, though, where you're like, <laughs> you're like it's the Han Solo dream house. That's just printing money, Jerry. It's just <laughs> printing money. I mean, come on, Lucasfilm. Come on. Okay. It's not on, too late. On, I'm sorry. They can, can still do it. <laughs> you could still do. I mean, bring back, bring back, uh, 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 what is it? Uh, Forces of Destiny. But just yeah. have like the heavily makeup Han Solo and heavily makeup Chewbacca <laughs> so have a stupid. dream house 
together. <laughs> so oh, that's good. Moving on with the plot. Uh, R2 and 3PO, they, they infiltrate uh, the Imperial gathering on Kessel. They have a huge stadium there um, where big, big gathering of slaves, droids, Imperials, everyone. And this, uh, this alien dude who works for the Empire named Grand Moff Hissa shows up. And he's got pointy elf ears and sharp shark teeth. Oh, you posted a picture of him. I did. Uh, I think that was with the Matt Martin tweet. Uh, yes. But uh, so he comes out, and <laughs> so one another thing about these books is that the villains are very overt with how evil they are, because he bids everyone dark greetings. Oh my dark greetings, god! Everyone. And. Look Anytime the Imperials you. greet each other in these books, it's always with things like dark greetings or get the dark book of Imperial justice. Like it's so overt with just how kind of evil satanic. they are. I love it. Um, this was prime satanic panic time as well. Oh, it, it is. Really? Yeah, you're right. This is, this oh, is like, wow. we're just coming out of the satanic panic in the, in the early, 90s. in the eighties and not yeah, early nineties. Oh, I, mean, I didn't realize was, that. Oh, so this, that's absolutely hysterical. Honestly. I didn't even think of that, Jerry. That's a really good point. You, you gotta watch out because the Empire is there. It's space Satan. It's space Satan. <laughs> He's even got the pointy ears. It, this is, it sounds like someone who watched Star Trek was like, let's do that in Star Wars, but with satanic but like bad. overtones. <laughs> yeah. Dark readings, dark readings, mean mean feelings to you, good friends. So Hissa makes Hissa makes his big announcement, which is all right. So as we all know, for years, there have been rumors that the emperor had a three-eyed son. You know, as th those rumors have just been around. <laughs> and so he, he's like, we always denied these, but it was just to keep him safe. Because here is the son of the emperor and the new leader of the empire. And out walks a, a handsome man with three eyes named Trioculus. So Michael, bow, which one is which bow, one? Is bow, he bow, 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 uh, he's the, he's the good looking one. Uh he is the center bow, bow, and the right. Bow, bow. I believe in miracles. The center is the truth Tru version, which I think Boopenheim said looks like Henry Cavill, so. Yeah, kind of does. Where are you huh? from? You sex a thing. So that's uh, the son of the emperor. That's who okay. Hissa says is the son of the emperor. Can't you see? Oh, oh can't and you he, see? Um, his official title uh, prior to this was he was the supreme slave lord of Kessel. And it was written down in the dark ledger of the of the, the <laughs> yeah. meanies. Oh no. Um and as as this is going on, one of the pipes up and he's like um actually uh they said that the uh the prophets of the dark side said that uh if you don't have the glove of darth vader you're not the emperor and another grand admiral starts talking trash <laughs> and so trioculus blasts them with lightning out of his fingers so he can oh wow so he's force sensitive okay we'll get that's to surprising it. oh um, okay and it's not yeah, called oh, force lightning it is referred to as the lightning power of the dark side Dark because readings. it was the 90s and we didn't decide what the name was yet. <laughs> okay. I don't know dark what readings. the midichlorian which part of the midichlorians make the dark side lightning happen, <laughs> you think? <laughs> Stop it. Um so after that, uh Trioculus has a meeting with his moths, um, one of whom notably has earrings shaped like blasters. I don't know why that's a detail they felt the need to include. Is that Tory Fox? That. Is Tory Fox? Is, <laughs> is mandatory? It's the mandatorian. <laughs> it's a mandatorian. Um, but Trioculus wants to to seal his rule, and so he tells all his moths, "We need to find the glove of Darth Vader so that I can cement my my place in power." Damn straight. Uh, and then the book goes on a page long tangent about the meat they're eating, <laughs> because. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Steve is Steve, in the chat. Steve. Is, now it's a party. Now it's I'm a party. I'm sorry. Now it's a party. <laughs> Girl, if I got some stories for you. <laughs> so, oh my God. This meat comes from a species of uh, whale creature on the planet Calamari called Walladons, oh, who are okay. endangered. And it goes on mm. a page long tangent about how they're endangered and how it's endangering oh, so the ecology. Uh, and that's kind of the theme of this book. Sure. 
hunting and endangered species and uh and then so they're, so they're kind of like <laughs> we'll dump our toxic waste in there where they live <laughs> essentially right? right well the dumping toxic waste comes in later that's a later book oh sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> i thought it was the Jesus i thought it was Christ. this one my bad uh yeah you'll have to wait for a mission from mount yoda to get to that one <laughs> scotty <laughs> I don't I'm believe living this. for Scotty's reactions. Right I don't now. believe this. I really I've don't. Actually heard of, I've actually heard of Mount Yoda, but but I'm not. <laughs> I didn't know this it was is real. Scotty. We're a third of the way through the first book. This, <laughs> this is all. This is all real. This might be an entire month long series. Holy shit! <laughs> okay, keep it going, Michael. This is a all lot right. to take in. Um, <laughs> this is actually an interesting. <laughs> Islamari. <laughs> Fajitas. Miri, fajitas. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that, Michael. Um, okay. Uh, I lost my okay. place for a second. Uh, yeah, the I, now I want to eat Silmari fajita. Okay. Uh, the Imperials also uh, decide they need a new base. Um, and they mentioned several planets, but only ones that showed up in the original trilogy. Uh, so they're like, what about Bespin? Yeah. Or uh, one of them mentions Dagoba, and I don't know how they even know about Dagobah. Yeah, how would they know Dagobah exists? That's that's impressive. What? Um, they watched The Empire Strikes Back, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> but they do actually choose Hoth as their base of operations. Oh, that's kind of a twist. And this is a plot point I actually think is kind of cool. It shows how the yeah, tides is... turned in the year after the war. Yeah. That is actually kind of cool. Now that I think about Hoth. it. Interesting. And because it is kind of cool, it is never once brought up again throughout the rest of the series. <laughs> <laughs> the one badass thing they just omit it. They're just like, yeah, we'll mention it. That's yeah, it. it's a, we're, we're, you know, we're in Star Wars, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then Luke and, um, okay, so we've already established Han's gone. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is going to tag along with Luke for the rest of this adventure? What original trilogy character do you want to see more of? I would say Leia, but that's just me assuming the obvious. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make a, an educated guess here. I can't remember who it is, but I want to make an educated guess that it is Dak Router's twin brother, oh, Sack geez. Router. <laughs> uh, you were very close, Jerry. It was Admiral Akbar. <laughs> Shut up. Well, of course. No way. The rest of this I'm plot is a Luke and Admiral Akbar team up. What? I want this so freaking bad i want this and so they they go and pick up the droids on Kessel, <laughs> but they can't send the message or else it'll get intercepted by imperials or something so they have to go to calamari first okay um and okay. they get there uh and I meanwhile trioculus gets a message from the provider of their walladon meat a man named captain dunwell who is on calamari? And he says trioculus. Wait, 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 wait. The guy who gives them their meat is a guy named Dunwell. Yes, <laughs> Dunwell. And he's a giant sailor oh, man who no. looks like Captain Ahab. <laughs> oh no! And oh, he... <laughs> See, this oh, all God. sounds ridiculous when I'm explaining it out loud. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> but like, this is why, you know. I understand the EU getting its its you know hate and people are obsessed with you know upset when it's gone, but like things like this are like yeah, get rid of it. Like this is the <laughs> well, like, maybe I mean, we should get... like I'll, I'll get to it at some point, maybe in the next part. But they had to retcon so many things to try and get these books to fit into continuity, and Jesus it never Christ. worked. I bet it never worked. Okay, so we've got Captain Dunwell. Yes. He he hits up Trioculus and he's like, Bro, come see me. I've got something for you. He doesn't give him any details at all, but Trioculus is like, I guess I should see what this is about. Um so he goes there, and it turns out Dunwell, um, on a recent uh submarine expedition, found some Death Star wreckage on the planet Calamari. Because it went through a black hole after the Death Star exploded. Of course. It, up there. <laughs> it entered a wormhole. It came out me, uh, um, on my port side. I'm uh, done well. I just imagine he sounds like an old-timey captain. And so they look at some... 
photo negatives that Shut they up. took because these books were written in the nineties. <laughs> some photo, um, some photo negatives. Yep. The, and uh, they see something that looks like a glove. So they're like, all right, we got to go see what this is about. This may be what we're looking for. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> we, <laughs> Luke and Akbar. Darth Vader just lost a glove during the Death Star thing. Yeah, they don't find the rest notice? of Vader. I guess he got incinerated or something. I don't know. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Steve. He's okay, Steve. He's okay. This is this is, These books are written in the night. Wild. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Luke and Akbar get there, and they hear uh, the cries from the, the lead Waladon, which is named Leviathor, uh, because it's sad <laughs> that all its brethren are getting sucked up by Dunwell's ship. Yes. Um. <laughs> And Leviathor. and Akbar uh, declares that he will uh, one day free Leviathor. And Luke's like, well, we're not really doing anything right now, so let's just go do it. <laughs> At the exact same time that Trioculus is going there. So our heroes aren't doing anything to stop the villain's plot. It is entirely coincidental that they both end up in the same place. Oh, my God. And that will be a running theme throughout these books. <laughs> so, there's, oh. so there should be no reason this, this, this meeting of minds happens. Yes, you know, um, like, they're just there to free whales. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Star Trek whatever, right? Four, yeah, Star, Star Trek 4. Mm -hmm, that's a good I one. I forgot to mention another thing. These movies have Star Trek movie syndrome. Where oh, with the Star that. Trek movies, the best ones are all the even number ones. With this series, the best books are all the odd number ones. Oh, so one, okay. three, and five are the best. Interesting. Oh, in my sick. opinion. So far, I'm really a huge fan. <laughs> Um, Akbar keeps lecturing about the Waladons and how it's damaging the ecology. It gets old real fast. Um, Leviathor gets captured by Dunwell. Um, and then Trioculus goes in a big diving suit, blows up some of the Death Star wreckage, and he finds the glove of Darth Vader. Oh, shit. Of course. And now he wields it. Um, oh, there was a, a Luke line I wanted to point out. Uh, or it's not a line, but it's just a bit of narration. Um, it was an old Jedi rule of thumb. Says. What was that? I said it's all Luke says. It's just yeah. like that narration. Yeah, go on. Continue. It was an old Jedi rule of thumb to attack when the odds were overwhelmingly against you. You know, that's the Jedi way. That's the Jedi way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hack and slash. Uh, but then the heroes in their little submarine get sucked into a whirlpool created by Dunwell ship, and so they're going in whether they like it or not. Oh, wow. Why not? So now we find out why I love Trioculus so much, because this man is a complete idiot. Okay. <laughs> he gets the glove of Darth Vader, and he's, he's like, aha, and he's walking around Dunwell's ship, and there's a few aliens that are playing sabacc and gambling, and they won't right, move right. out of the way for him. Of course, this is the EU, so everyone plays Sabacc at yes. all times. <laughs> and right. so he reaches out his hand and tries to force choke him. <laughs> because he thought that Vader's power came from his glove. Oh, my I God. I remember this part. Incredible. <laughs> and when nothing happens, he's really confused, but he covers for it by shooting lightning at him. <laughs> so wait, hold on. This man has the ability to shoot lightning out of his fingertips because he's the son of Palpatine, but he has no ability to force choke someone. I love give me, that. give me like two more uh, okay, bullet okay. points, Scotty. Yeah, go, and this will go. this will become go. clear. <laughs> um, so he's talking Grand Moff Hissa. They go to Dunwell's private chambers to discuss this. Um, and Trioculus is literally like throwing a temper tantrum where he's like, "I'm not interested in symbols. I want Darth Vader's power." <laughs> <laughs> oh. and um there's a brilliant video on the glove of darth vader by a, a guy named austin mcconnell which i highly recommend okay. um in this next conversation he pointed out something that blew my mind um there's a trope called made and butler conversations okay. in which two characters explain things that they both already know for the sake of the audience and here's <laughs> where we get a huge exposition dump in about a page and a half oh, so the lightning, Lee. <laughs> the lightning comes from a cybernetic implant that Trioculus has. Okay, that's kind of cool. And if he uses it okay. too much, it will kill him. Oh my god. And he's already starting that. to push the limit a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> 
and he is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Steve, <laughs> I've got some relief for you. Trioculus <laughs> is not the son of Palpatine. He is a fraud. What? And he is he's basically what? he's a fraud. He's not the son of Palpatine. Fantastic. What? He is a figurehead for the moths who are trying to seize power right now. <laughs> and so you'd okay. think, okay, maybe the whole three-eyed son thing was a lie. No. The real son of Palpatine is Triclops. Who is criminally insane, and so he's been... Duh. They contradict themselves on this. Sometimes they say they put him in an ins insane asylum for his whole life, and other times they will just say he was uh, uh, a slave on Kessel. <laughs> now, <laughs> yes, wait a minute. Did. <laughs> <laughs> this was so all revealed in a page and a half of dialogue, by the way. So Triclops... <laughs> And Trioculus are different entities. They are. Triclops is okay. the real son of Palpatine. But Trioculus. And he's, and he's not as handsome, right? No, he is uglier, and his third eye is on the back of his head. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I would like to point out right now that in The Rise of Skywalker, we never see Ray's dad from behind. So no. I choose to believe that Triclops is canon. Oh imagine. shit! Could you imagine <laughs> if that was the case? <laughs> you think you're blowing Steve's mind right now? <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, Trioculus's medical droid comes up with a solution. He's like, "All right, I can put some implants in your glove." <laughs> um, I'm gonna read the dialogue verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> Okay, I can put one of these inside the tip of each of the gloves' fingers, MD said, holding one of them up. When your fingers press against these devices, they will give off a piercing high-frequency sound, an ear-splitting pitch heard only by the one you've aimed the glove at. It will make your victims gasp and fall to their knees. Their eardrums will explode and their brains disintegrate, just like Darth Vader was able to do with his own natural power. Yeah, yeah right. right. You know, it's right. It's like a like, yeah. times that Darth Vader exploded people's brains and eardrums in the movies <laughs> happened all the time. I love, I love that when he does that. Like whenever it leaked out of like Piet's ears and stuff that yeah. one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then beautiful. We get another plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that Dunwell has bugged the room that. Trioculus and Hissa were having this conversation in. Wait, the whaler captain? Yeah. And he, so now <laughs> he's got dirt on these guys. <laughs> this is great. And at this exact moment, Luke barges in and he defeats the captain and mind tricks him into giving him the codes to set the whales free or whatever. So they decide to set the self destruct for the ship first and then go free the whales. <laughs> okay. Classic plan, classic yeah. Star Wars. I mean, it's not that much worse than the Jabba's Palace plan. Let's be no. real. <laughs> sure, that's now, just well, it's a bit more to that. <laughs> but now I really want someone. Can someone out there who's good at art like do like the free Willy poster with like the boy Jeez, standing Star underneath Wars. Willy, but like Luke with a lightsaber and like a space <laughs> whale jumping over him? Please, please, someone do yep. this. Also, poor. Uh... <laughs> Oh my god, it's amazing. Done well. Done well. Good I would also like well. to point out that Drew Struzan had to draw these space whales, so y'all yeah. better damn well enjoy them. <laughs> Those are kind of sick, though. Hell yeah, space whales. <laughs> well, canon was ill-defined at the time these books were written, to be Th fair. This, if we, this if was we not want to canon. give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, this is, I believe, F canon is what this is called. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Okay, Luke has a line here uh, where they're talking about uh, R2's trying to like hack their codes or whatever, and Dunwell's like, ha, I spent three years making the codes to the submarine. You'll never figure them out. And Luke says, uh, you underestimate him. Oh, no, 3PO says this. My bad. He says, you underestimate him, Captain. He says Darth Vader's codes used to be much more complicated than yours, and it never took him more than 15 minutes to figure those out. <laughs> Which I think is meant to imply that Darth Vader coded every single door on the Death Star. I yeah, think is what it's trying to. Imply. Could you imagine? Darth Vader was a was a locksmith 
of yeah. of masterful proportions. You know, he He'd built like, C3PO and he, he made the, the codes for the doors on the Death Star. It was a <laughs> It's like, like, can you imagine like some guy waiting to get like, I, I just have to use the latrine real quick, Vader, Vader. I have to use the refresher. Hold on, hold on. One second, one second, Captain. Don't so, look. don't look. Okay. Once go. they've set the 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 Waladons free, um, Trioculus and Luke finally meet face to face. And Trioculus tries to make his brains explode, but you, Luke uses Dunwell as a meat shield and just battering rams him into <laughs> Trioculus. <laughs> Luke Skywalker then, uh, uses Dunwell as a meat shield. Yes. Yes. Okay. I guess now he's well done. <laughs> it doesn't explode his brains, though. It doesn't get that far. Okay, good. Um, it just worried. hurts him a bit, I guess. I was very worried. And then um, they have a brief little fight where Trioculus is blasting him with lightning. But then Hiss is like, yo, we got to get out of here. This place is about to blow. So everyone just sort of runs away and they they all get away, except for Dunwell. Dunwell goes down with the ship because Trioculus won't let him onto his escape. Oh, captain, my captain. Uh, no guess, way. I was going to say, it was an Ahab, Captain Ahab. So yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And so the whole, uh, <laughs> yep, it's me, Galenorian Saber. <laughs> um, so Dunwell spying on them was entirely pointless in the end. No one ever uh, <laughs> learned anything from it. Um, and everyone gets away. Nothing of consequence has happened aside from <laughs> Trioculus getting the gold. Um, and then Luke Bart shot listening to the concert of Wallada. Really? Uh oh! I think I Michael disappear? froze. I think oh, Michael, Michael froze for a brief moment. I can hear you there. Oh, you're back! Oh, you're, you're, back, back, you're back! You're back! You're back! You're back! So, wait, okay, Akbar did what now? Sorry, we are. I'm enthralled. I'm enthralled. Hi, Am I back? Michael. Yeah, yes, you're, you're, back. Back. you're back. You're back. Okay. Don't know what happened there. Oh. That was weird. No, it's okay, Mike. So, what? What did Ak Akbar do? Uh, they they just listen to the Waladon songs on Calamari, and that's the end of the book. Because <laughs> you gotta have you gotta have a good song. They saved the whales. Um, oh wait, hold on, I gotta find what exactly. Um, they they hear uh, a water ballet, Waladon folk up. melody. Where's the Sith? Where's the Sith? Classical Waladon songs. Classical. <laughs> <laughs> and an opera Just, Leviathor had composed that told the legendary story of how he became the Waladon leader many years ago by helping the Waladon survive an undersea volcanic eruption. Well, I'm glad we're here. Um, I want to see that. <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> that is wild. Does does he pull out like some giant, like these are like giant whales, right? These are like space whales supposed to be. Like there are there. They're like whales on the planet Calamari, so they're actual whales, but they're like alien whales. Does he pull out yeah. like a giant cello or something? He's like, hold on, let me sing you the song of my I guess people. they have their own language, because uh, Akbar <laughs> understands it. Oh, I forgot to mention, they have a really weird way of describing Akbar. I'm going to see if I find the exact quote. Um, they describe Akbar as um, one of the few air-breathing fishmen who understood the Waladon <laughs> songs. <laughs> I like that. Air breathing fish man is what I'm going to call so like a, like fandom menace people from now on. You're an air breathing <laughs> fish man. I love it. You're an air But yeah, fish that man. concludes book one. <laughs> wow. The love of Darth Vader. Holy shit. We, you're right. We might need, we're like already 49 minutes in. We're like yeah. 50 minutes in. And uh, we're trying it's to get hard to books because I I'm want, blown away. I want, like, I want, you to like go through but also like i can't help but like because i forgot a lot of that from the podcast i listened to holy shit like that there is some incredible stuff there scotty i want to hear how are you doing right now man i'll tell you this much i lit some incense because i need to be more zen and accept the fact <laughs> that this already does exist in real life so i've got incense right in front of me i'm trying to take it all in um because 
this has been quite a lot on my psyche. Um, this is and a lot. <laughs> I I just can't believe that this actually exists. And like, you can purchase this. This is not something that this is not fan made. I mean, it is fan made, but it is definitely not something that like <laughs> this is, did not come from a forum. Is what I'm trying this to was, say. This was officially licensed. It was a this relic year. of its time in the EU. Someone Drew, at LFL Drew Struzan. did the book. I, yeah, Drew, Drew, <laughs> Drew Struzan did the freaking covers. No, that's just unreal to me. Are you that's kidding unreal. me? Yep. Are you kidding me? This is like this is almost this, this is this is better than Marvel Lump. So wait, my big question because I don't know where this if the next book picks us up, but who is now in possession of the glove of Darth Vader? Trioculus. He he got away with the glove, so he is presumably okay. now the Emperor. Um, well, damn it! If it only took a glove, it'd be, it'd be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's like it just so. Ooh. It's like the opposite of the OJ Simpson trial. Sorry. Yeah, yes, ahead, it yeah. is the opposite of the OJ Simpson trial. Like, oh, say that again. Oh, it's, it's, it's the opposite. <laughs> of, yeah, the opposite of the OJ Simpson trail. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So the second book. That's kind of a cool name. Is the Lost City of the Jedi? It's a cool name. A lot of these books do have cool names. Um, if well, we want to give them some credit. Well, Michael said earlier that his least favorite are two, f- four, and six. So we're on two it's, now. It's just not as good. Um, oh, good. Okay, great, great. Uh. <laughs> So, this book opens up with uh, our heroes on Bespin. Okay. Uh, because Lando needs their help dealing with some food pirates on Cloud City. Okay. No one likes a food pirate. No one. <laughs> True. Um, we get another acronym uh, where they have a warning and detection device, also known as a WAD. <laughs> Oh, sir, it seems we, sir, it seems we blew our wad too early. <laughs> <laughs> a wad. So Han Solo is skip. <laughs> sorry, I'll, I'll wait for Jerry to call. Back. I'm sorry. No. no okay, so I'm, I'm out reaction. of my depth now. I have no idea what happens from here on out. I know. A I knew wad. certain things about Glove of Darth Vader. Don't pull in. Let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm, I'm afraid we blew our wad to her. Like a wad, a wad, a wad. W a d d wad. Of course, wad. Lando came up with that. Of course, <laughs> wad. he knows what he's doing. Let's wad. call it a wad. <laughs> can we get can wad. we get Chris Ryan? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's put that in the Bantha verse. Can we put a that in wad. the Bantha verse? The wad. <laughs> a wad. So Han Solo is still building his sky house <laughs> and they pop in for a visit. Uh, Please Luke, have some more d'oeuvres that Chewie and I prepared. Yeah. We're lovers. I mean, literally yeah, he's cooking showing. like Corellian yeah. curry for them. They're like him, him and Chewie's like, Oh, listen, Leia. I mean, the war was great. You know, I like, he's, he's kind of like a little bit of a, uh, of a mature, like a, listen, I, I, it's me and Chewie. All right. I just, it, it's a thing. I like hairy guys. That's okay. Uh, so go on after, Oh, and, uh, his sky house has a two cloud car garage. They do say that, huh? <laughs> man, he must have made a, <laughs> made a lot of money smuggling. <laughs> the, the pun, the pun. <laughs> Scotty's like, I can see your incense flowing around you, sir. Um, so then Luke is like, all right, we got to go now. Gets into his Y-Wing, hits the start button, and it immediately explodes because someone his Y-Wing. Wait. Uh, someone sabotaged his Y-Wing? Oh, no. Hold on. I'm back. Where, oh, what did I say good. before I dropped off? You said He's- Luke got into a Y-Wing, which is also weird. And yeah, he, explodes, he flies a Y-Wing then- in these books. <laughs> Um, he hits really the start trying. button and it immediately not? explodes because someone put a bomb in his Y wing. <laughs> Did he die? Uh, no, he just had like some bruises and some cracked ribs and his mechanical hand Did got messed die? up, but he's totally fine. <laughs> they bring him to the hospital in Clad City and he's totally fine. 
So this plot point is almost immediately rendered entirely pointless. <laughs> um, just, just for the drama of it. So Luke, Luke is, uh, is while, he's, he drama. while he's recovering, he has a <sighs> he has a dream about a forest <laughs> fighter. All right, yeah, forest fire. If I can speak, ah. Jesus, a uh, <laughs> a like building with a turbo lift jungle that's on fire, and then the ghost of Obi Wan shows up. <clears throat> oh shit! He says, "Luke, memorize this code for me." Oh no! <laughs> and fun fact: a couple of years ago, before Pablo Hidalgo blocked everyone on Twitter. I tweeted at him asking what his favorite part of the Jedi Prince books was. This uh -huh. is his favorite part. Oh, oh my Lord. God. The you code. have it here, folks. Oh. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold up what that code is and if y'all can see it. Oh no. Oh, I don't know if I can see. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, I see J E99 D I eight. Oh my god. That says Jedi Force. That's the oh, sorry. Yep. Jedi Force with some numbers thrown in. Code. Jedi Force. Yeah, that's with the numbers. secret code that Obi Wan gave to him. Was he trying? Like, I'm really trying to 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 win the lottery, <laughs> the ghost lottery. This is your this is your dad's Wi-Fi password. It's really it's really obscure. He says he loves passwords. Yeah, it's your dad's Wi-Fi. Oh man. yes, yes, I, I um, did all the uh, Obi Wan. Did I tell you I did all the things on the Death Star? I don't know why I'm talking like Darth Vader right now. I'm sorry. So I'm wait, to be it's J E number number D I number number F O or F O number number R C E. Uh, F O R number number then C E. Okay. But yeah, that's unreal. Can you imagine, Luke? That's the secret. Code. Remember this code for me: J E nine nine D I eight eight F O R zero zero C E. That's unreal, guys. Master Obi Wan, I think I've cracked it. <laughs> that is unreal. We've cracked the Empire cipher. <laughs> uh, he says its importance will soon be revealed, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> So now we move on to chapter two. <laughs> this yeah, was all in the first chapter. Pretty eventful one. chapter. I will say that. Holy shit. Um, so now we, we're at the second chapter of the second book. So it's time to meet the main character of these books. <laughs> a new character who is meant to be like an audience surrogate, basically. He is <laughs> a 12-year-old a boy named Ken. Ken? Who, yep. He lives uh, underground on Yavin 4. <laughs> In the lost city of the Jedi. Right. Where he has been raised Clearly. entirely by droids. Uh, he's a huge fanboy for the original trilogy because he's got toys of like the Millennium Falcon and stuff. Shut up. And he's been reading all about the adventures of Luke and Han and Leia for all his life. It's pretty much taking their demographic and putting in the novel. That's the exactly that is, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like I said, audience surrogate. It's, pretty, it's purely like. I like See, that. this is you in Star Wars. That's yeah, very yeah, yeah. And as a result, it's, it's kind of obnoxious at times. <laughs> oh, I bet. It's, it's very blatant. Um, and oh yeah, Andy's like, I don't want to do my homework. I want to go up to the surface and see what's out there in the real world. It's basically the Little Mermaid. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he lives. Um. His address is 12 South Jedi Lane. There's a there's a freaking address. <laughs> yep. This will become a plot point later, by the way. <laughs> 12 <laughs> this South Jedi Lane. Oh, Jedi Lane. I forgot <laughs> an, a, an important detail from Glove of Darth Vader when they're going through the um the streets of Kessel. Oh, I'm going to see if I can find this because this is oh. hilarious. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I think William is having the time of his life right now in the chat. <laughs> I am, too. <laughs> Michael, this is insane. Yeah, these books are real and you can buy them. And I highly recommend buying them. <laughs> Just, this is, William, how is that allowed? <laughs> <laughs> 12 Jedi legs. So while the droids were on Castle, I forgot to mention this. 
<laughs> Some of the streets they pass when they're on Kessel. Oh, no, please God, no. Oh man. Boulevard. Wait, 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 wait. Which one again? You cut out for a second. Slave Lord Boulevard. Uh, Actually, Slave that's, Lord Boba Boulevard. Sh- that's that's Boba Ship Starship Boulevard now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Spice Mines Avenue. <laughs> Which I think is where Scotty is right now with all his incense. Uh- <laughs> Close to it. <laughs> Guys, this is unreal. <laughs> the uh- address is... <laughs> Addresses have never been a thing in Star Wars. What? They have to make shirts. <laughs> does, does, does Lando live at 69 Cloud Lane or something? He should. Yeah. Does he, does he, does Weirdly he enough, some... I don't think we ever get the address to Han's Sky House. No, we don't. It's, it's the Sam biggest Shane. disappointment in this whole series. Carbonite Highway. Like, we, <laughs> like, like, Carbonite, Carbonite uh, Court. <laughs> Yeah. So wait. So we're at we're at now we're at twelve. Was it one two Jedi Lane? What was it again? Twelve. Oh, already... Twelve Jedi. Twelve. Lane. So it's biblical. It's twelve Jedi Lane. Okay. It sounds it sounds like an erotic um, jet like Star Wars novel or something. Twelve Jedi Lane. I'm just I'm just saying. It's like the Star Wars equivalent of ten Cloverfield Lane. It's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> is there are there multiple author authors or is there one author? Um, all of these books are written by a married couple. Uh, it's written by mm-hmm. Paul Davids and Hollis Davids. Good lord! My God, Give them God. some love. Um, uh, Ken also has a mystery past, uh, where he was delivered mystery. to the. Yeah. He was delivered to the city by a Jedi in brown robes, and the only clue to his identity is a crystal that he wears around his neck. Jyn Erso. He is Jyn Erso. <laughs> and right. <Ray. laughs> um, I wonder how much of this was taken, though. And stuff, <laughs> but, you know? but Ken basically decides, I'm not going to go do my homework today. I'm going to go up to the surface and see what the real world's like. And so he goes out there, and that's the end of it. Has he happened. done that before, or no? Nope. First time. Wow. What a uh, time to do it. So I'm meanwhile, leaving 12 Jedi Lane. <laughs> meanwhile, my boy, Trioculus, oh, is hanging oh, out yeah. with Grand Moff Hissa. And they're going to see the prophets of the dark side to receive Kadan, who is the, the head of the prophets. They're going to get his dark blessing so that he can dark officially greetings. be coronated as emperor. Yes, Scott. Dark greetings. Dark greetings. Dark greetings. Dark, dark greetings. greetings. Um, so they go to that space station where they're at. Um, and that's basically all we get right now. They, they do that later. Actually. Um, they just sort of announce that they're going there in a little bit. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, just so Luke, everyone knows just so everyone knows we're going for a dark blessing. Yep. We'll see you later. Dark, dark, dark salutations. Everyone. We'll see you later. We'll see you later. <laughs> This book series is the real dark blessing, in my opinion. You're I mean, damn usually, right. usually, usually, usually we say peace out, but I'm going to say war out. War out, because yep. I'm, I'm, I'm edgy. <laughs> uh, so, meanwhile, Luke, after this dream, is like, I got to find where this place is. So he's uh, just hanging out around Yavin 4, trying to look for it. And he runs into this weird alien man who's like nine feet tall. He's green. He's got like vines for hair. And his name is Baji. And he yeah, only speaks in rhymes. So he's a stoner. Are you kidding me. So he's, he's like Rip Van Winkle, isn't he? Rip Van Winkle doesn't he speak in rhymes or like riddles? It's like His... they're playing on the whole the whole Yoda trope, right? Where Yoda speaks backwards, I guess. kind of, and everything, um, and then vines oh for air is like okay. His first lines are, "You come from afar, so very welcome you are." Baji is my name. I'm glad that you came. Ryman's my game. <laughs> uh, and his whole species, uh, which are called Hodins, uh, they're basically a bunch of healers. And so uh, he's just talking with Luke for a little bit. Luke's a little uncertain about him. Uh, they bump into <laughs> Ken, who shows up. Um <clears throat> What does Ken even tell? Is Luke him? uncertain of him because he's like, this is gonna get really annoying. Yes, if this guy mostly that. with us. Like, honestly, he's like, should I kill honestly. him now or later? Is sure, he still yeah. with Akbar? Or is no, this like, Akbar's just, gone okay, at this okay. point? Akbar's Thank done God. his job. 
Good lord. <laughs> um so Ken shows up and he starts fanboying. He's like, Oh my god, Luke, you trained with Yoda and all this stuff. I don't know why he knows that, but I love that they know it's been one year after Return of the Jedi. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. Which will become a continuity issue later on. Oh, oh <laughs> So of one of does. the droids who's charged with like protecting Ken, <laughs> one of the droids shows up and just starts shooting smoke out of his hands and, and gets Ken out of there and brings him back to the city. And Luke's like, that was weird. As one uh, does. <laughs> as one does. Yes. <laughs> so meanwhile, we cut back to Trioculus now, who's again, the star of this series, in my opinion. Sure. Of course. And he, he arrives at uh, the space station, Scardia which is where the uh, the prophets are hanging out. Right, right. And Kadan, who's the leader of the prophets, is drinking tea made from bark on the trees of Endor for some reason. Because it's a planet you've heard of. Exactly. And so uh, Hiss is like, yo, dude, Trioculus, before we go in there, you cannot lie to this man. This man will know if you're lying and he will decimate you. And so Trioculus immediately tries to lie to him, being like, yes, I am, in fact, the son of Palpatine. <laughs> and so Kadan pulls out, like, this chalk ball and crushes it in his hands. And it as it turns yellow, he's like, yellow is the color of a lie. <laughs> <laughs> so he uses a chalk ball as his determination if someone is indeed lying. I guess. That's badass. Either that or he's just being really theatrical about it. <laughs> I'm going to do it with my students. You lie. <laughs> Yellow is the color hair. of lies. You cheated on my test. And so they go through the whole deal. They exposit once again that Trioculus is not the real. Uh, yes, I am the Jedi Prince Master. He is. Uh, Can't get Triclops is, is still the fake. They just go through this exposition again. Um, and Kadan pulls out this time another chalk ball and he crushes it and it's silver. And he says, ah, silver is the color of a Jedi prince. Very oddly what? specific, but. Wait. Hold on. This and is so Jedi strange. prince live on Jedi lane. He prophesies that the, the Jedi prince will, will bring about the end of Trioculus. Oh, and uh, I think I forgot to mention earlier, Ken is a Jedi prince. Of course, because he's th that's what every kid wants. So yeah, wait, you now this makes sense. This you is may be wondering it. what a Jedi Prince is. Yeah, I was going to ask you that next because <sighs> we know that it's not some sort of king. I will give exactly as much explanation, explanation oh, as there is in these books. Here we go. Moving on to the next Ready? point. <laughs> oh, it is never explained. It really isn't. It's never nope. explained? Nope. He's just a Jedi it's Prince. And no one ever questions it. It's kind of cool, though. It's so, a cool title. So we don't know if he is a prince who is also a Jedi, or if there was some sort of Jedi monarchy in the lost city of the Jedi that say, we just don't yeah. know about. He's the Jedi prince, and that's all you need to know. Sure, that's so odd. Sure. Um, so Trioculus does get the dark blessing. And as he does, he's like, yes, I will destroy the Jedi prince. No, they never explain it, Seth. They <laughs> never explain it. And as he's like, yes, I will go destroy the Jedi Prince, Trioculus suddenly goes blind. Don't For a don't few seconds. Your... And then his sight comes back and he's like, huh, that was weird. And he just goes about his business. <laughs> he was using the glove of Darth Vader too much at home. You really should. Be, yeah. If you use that, if you use that glove too much, you are going to go blind. That's for sure. So they, <laughs> his wad should have warned him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the amount of wad should have warned him. I'm going to go lay down. Guy. I'm going to go lay down because this is, this is just too much. <laughs> okay, Scotty. Scotty's, on the, Scotty's, Scotty's on the psychiatrist's couch right now. <laughs> I can hear y'all. I can hear you just fine. Okay. Well, well, we can, we can hear you too. You're good. You're good. Crazy happens. Mr. Jaro, I'm going to buy these and donate them to the library. Yes, so do that. going to hysterically laugh for hours at the stupid EU logic, says William. You Hart. know, the worst part is it's probably already in there. That's the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have to buy anything, Will. Um, <laughs> so Luke goes into uh, a rebel meeting with Han and Leia and uh, 
I, I pointed out on Twitter in the illustration that Crick's Maydeen is there, um, and Akbar is there as well. And <laughs> as they're How's there, Crick's hair look. Does it, does it describe Crick's Maydeen's hair or not? He's not described in the book. He's only in the illustration. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> how's his hair in the illustration? Uh, it's hard to tell because he's like turned to the side like this. Damn. Okay. Um, <laughs> Twitter, and and you'll see. Um, <laughs> so then they start getting like an aerial bombardment, and this small like almost sort of like the remote that Luke is training against in A New Hope pops down into this room, and it starts moving around so fast no one can hit it with blasters. And that projects a, a hologram of Trioculus. <laughs> he says, all okay. right, all of y'all, this thing's going to blow up in 20 seconds. And if you don't tell me where the lost city of the Jedi is so I can find the Jedi Prince, this will explode. <laughs> and so they try and destroy it. Um, Luke eventually just holds it in place with the Force and cuts it in half. Um, but while this was happening, Trioculus. Oh, no. Trioculus catches a glimpse of Princess Leia. And he's like, this is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, I, Han's I will not make her my sure. queen. Yeah, Han And he's like, care. he immediately falls in love with her. And he's like, I can convince her to come to the dark side with me. <laughs> you all right, Scotty? I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, he decides now that he wants Leia to be his queen of the Empire. <laughs> The Dark Queen of the Empire, right? The Dark Queen of, course. of the Empire with the glove of Darth Vader. This, this may come most, up later in the book, Queen of the this, Empire. This is the most <laughs> insane thing I have ever heard. And I and oh, keep going. So Trioculus <laughs> launches his invasion of Yavin 4. Uh, he sends oh, we get another acronym. Oh, uh, he Lord. sends he sends tanks that are called TNTs. Whoa! <laughs> Like dynamite! No! This is that's so effing 90s. Uh, which stands for a treaded neutron torch. No! And he immediately starts burning the forest down, which leads to this book's environmental message of deforestation and forest yeah. fires and all so that. So this is where jazz. Luke's dream oh. this is where Luke's dream comes in. Exactly. Oh, I, I knocked like, down um, I knocked down my Hunter Black series figure because that's <laughs> that about the <laughs> Look out, it's TNTs. Um, so Trioculus is like, all right, this is going great. And then he goes blind again. Much like Scotty right now. So Scotty, wait, are you oh. wearing a blindfold? Yes, Katie gave it to I me. Just, I just really want to picture what's and, going um, on in my mind's eye. He's he's crying from all three of his eyes as he's blind. And he's like, <laughs> someone find me a healer. That's It's it's my profile pic on Twitter if you want contact. Oh, is that what that is? Yep. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> that's my blindfold. Wait. Is that the thumb I have? Um, I don't think so. I think you're. Uh, you might be thinking of the uh, triclops. Oh image. wow! Sorry, Michael. Damn. I, I know. How dare Scotty, you? This is Scotty's brain things. right now. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is the strangest thing I've ever heard, and I love the fan. <laughs> so, um, meanwhile, uh, Hiss is like, "Yo, the stormtroopers saw this weird dude whose species are all healers down." You want me to get him? And Trioculus is like, yes, get him immediately. So they get Baji. They capture him. Uh, okay, so I forgot to mention earlier that Ken left his notebook behind when his droids took him back to the, the Lost City. Um, and his notebook has his address on it. <laughs> you know, in case one of the droids doesn't know where Ken lives, it, yeah, as he's the only human living in this city. On 12 Jedi Lane. Yeah. <laughs> And so he, he can you comes be back. any more? Can you be any 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 more? Just I don't even just go. My brain is broken at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so he he picks it up. He comes back and gets it from Baji, and is there in time to witness Baji getting arrested by stormtroopers, oh. and then bring Baji before Trioculus as a prisoner, and <laughs> Baji's like. Okay, so there is a cure for blindness in these forests. You have to eat these specific seeds from this flower for 100 days, or else you will go blind forever. What? Um, 
And then Trioculus is like, oh shit, I'm burning the forest down right now. Oh <laughs> my god. Ah, and so Trioculus, I like Trioculus, that. the complete fool that he is, runs into Baji's burning hut to get the seeds out and so he comes out and he's horribly burned for the rest of the book series and is permanently <laughs> scarred by this <laughs> um it is also revealed around this time uh they they took the glove off and his hand is like mangled and completely messed up because he's been overusing the implants oh, um and God, it's also no. why he's going blind because <laughs> this complete idiot can't resist <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! All our priests were right. No. Uh, <laughs> um, so Luke and Han they they stumble upon Canon DJ, and they figure out that they can uh, use the uh, weather control system in the Lost City of the G to start some rain and put out the forest fires. Of course. Logic. Um, but Ken, when he meets Han, starts like fanboying out. He's like, "You're Han Solo. You made the the Kessel Run in twelve standard time parts, or whatever minute. he says." Ray did that standard thing. time parts. Yeah, they never say parsecs. They say standard time parts in this because they were trying to be scientifically accurate. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, fuck those guys. I don't even know how to say this, y'all. I don't know if you're ready for this. This is gonna be the craziest fucking thing you've ever heard in your life. Okay, okay? Scotty, no. brace yourself. Brace yourself. Oh. You'll see my real reaction. So when when Ken meets him, he says, like, you're one of the best Corellian pilots in the galaxy. He's like, what do you mean one of the best? Ken says that a better Corellian pilot, I shit you not, in this Star Wars book from 1992, was named Snoke. <sighs> I what shit the, you not. What? Now wait a minute. That's just what? like the whole droids character. Something Ren. Kylo, yeah, Kylo Ren. Ren. Yes. It is Kylo. Kaibo. Kaibo Ren. Yeah. That's like the same weirdness. So, Snoke. According to Ken, Dude. Snoke Larone made the trip from the Bespin system to Yavin Four in fifteen standard time parts. Standard time parts. I, um, can we, can and we then make, Han's like, yeah, but make... he's dead. He got killed in the Battle of Endor, so I'm the best now, right? <laughs> so what, I, what I'm saying is J.J. Abrams stole a minor character that is briefly referenced in the 1992 we... book, The Lost City of the Jedi. That, really is, that, is, that is that is head headcanon right now for me, that, that Snoke's oh, last name was He wasn't Lerone. made by Palpatine. He was just lying. He was a really good Corellian pilot who got wiped out in the Battle of Endor. Oh my god. I want Snoke's last name to be Larone. There's just something about that Lerone. last name. You're a Larone. <laughs> <laughs> and then I he goes Lerone. to Tatooine and an old woman asks him his last name and he says Snoke Skywalker. Snoke Skywalker. <laughs> Snoke Lerone. So this is what Ken asked. This is what Ken told Han. Yes, that the best Corellian <laughs> pilot in the galaxy was Snoke Larone. <laughs> Everything Good in Lord. his shirt. Michael, you need to just get on Canva and just make graphics. Just like and make money off of this. <laughs> so uh <laughs> They go down to the Lost City of the Jedi, and they're trying to figure out the code for the weather control satellites. Oh my and God! Luke figures no. out it was the code that Obi Wan told him in his dream. <laughs> yes, the origins of Snoke have been revealed. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, so the, the code was for what? Now I was I was bringing it was up for comment. the weather control satellites uh, in the Lost City of the Jedi. It was of Jedi. course it is. J of course it is. Number number D. Gosh, they number really number. need the Jedi. Really need an IT guy. I just gotta say, just so they yep. can get like better codes or something. And they, not, they should have hired Anakin. And <laughs> so it's glossed Anakin over. <laughs> it's glossed over very quickly, but I guess the rebels just won this battle because the Imperials go away. <laughs> Trioculus wow. orders a replica glove to be made <laughs> so that he can still have the symbolic. Nature. I don't know why you can't take the implants out, but yeah. he just decides, no, I need a replica glove. So uh, Ken now officially joins the Rebel Alliance and Spin, and that's the end of the book. Spin. Man, these books have such big cliffhangers. I can't the handle spin, it. 
Does Spin have a wad? <laughs> <laughs> so how are we feeling, boys? Do you think we're, we're are we down for one more? For Zorba? Yes, we're down for more. Am... That's got Zorba the Hunt in it. Are you kidding me? I'm down. I am down. This is oh Michael. Jedi Force. I understand okay. now why people were like, "Yeah, get rid of the EU." I get it now. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get now, it right now. Scotty is Scotty is that dude from what is it like a uh, 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 like White Castle or whatever? Like Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, burn this mother down. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> now I never want to hear of this again. The fact that some <laughs> things are still possible. I hope the Mandalorian takes this book or like they like John Favre's like. Read a great book. <laughs> There's a good one. We should adapt it. It's a Jedi. Want, kid, Season three kid. is the Mando trying to find the Jedi prince to bring to Luke. He's like trying to find the glove of Darth Vader or some shit. Like oh, it's a Mandalorian glove. So sick. I'm gonna be Moff Gideon and Trioculus team up is all I want in the world. It is oh. the glove of Darth Vader is at twelve Jedi Lane. <laughs> okay, so this next book, Zorba the Hut's Revenge. <laughs> Oh, I was Alex, Alex. 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 Well, I'm, bud. so glad you're here just in time for my well, favorite or second favorite. I haven't okay, really come to so a conclusion. This is somewhere on your list. Okay. This is like high. This on your is list. top one or two. Wow. Um, Alex, I really want to watch the replay, my man. This is, this <laughs> is insanity. This, has been this nuts. is insanity. So the, the inciting incident for this book, um, Han Solo is having a housewarming party. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're back there. Again. The <laughs> only consistent through line right. through this series so far is Han Solo's <gasps> damn sky <As> a- house. <laughs> With a two <laughs> car garage. A two, two cloud car-, car garage. A two yeah. cloud car garage, which technically is a four car garage. Yeah, honestly. Because right. cloud cars are two. Okay. I'm sorry. Han Solo's effing sky house. Effing sky house. We're gonna be this tonight. entire thing. Oh my yep. lord! And he's having um, a housewarming, a housewarming. Yeah. Okay. And so we're Luke's trying there. to figure out what sort of gift sure. to get him for his housewarming party. <laughs> 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 so him and Ken are hanging out, real life, and he's. They decide that he needs a housekeeping droid. This is, this is so mundane. He needs a Roomba. <laughs> yeah, basically. But it, like a protocol droid with a personality. Only but he's going to get some cute videos of Chewie riding on top of it. So that's going to be great. And so they go to uh, the Droid Fest on Tatooine. Droid Fest? There is a whole like convention, I guess, of Jawas. It's like Burning Jabal Man? Festival. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they go there and uh, they encounter a naked Jawas or something. <laughs> like Time a- for another acronym, boys. Oh, oh shit. Geez. It's always oh. the beginning. It's JDTs. always the so good. JDTs, which stands for Jawa Droid Traders. JTD? J- JDTs. JDTs. Jawa S-T-D. Droid Traders. Yeah. Strong Trooper Droid Traders. JTD. Um, JDT. Wad. Wad, JTD, and TNT spin, and spin. And spin. Good God. Um, so we, we need to get a, just a shirt with all the acronyms. Yes, that's, that's <laughs> what I think is happening. Just like spin, <laughs> uh, spin, wad, JDT. <laughs> so, meanwhile, as Luke and Ken are going there, um, Ken, because he studied in the lost city of the Jedi or whatever. Anytime there's like any plot information they need to know, Ken automatically knows it, no matter how obscure it is. Oh, that's sick. Such as what happened to oh. Jabba the Hutt's properties after he died. Sorry, we forgot TNT. We forgot TNT. Yeah, TNT. Um, so Ken informs us. Um, actually, Luke informs us that um, after Jabba's palace died. <laughs> <laughs> Face Nick, you're gonna have to catch the replay because this is I use this to meditate. Nick, Nick, you seriously, people He's like covering his third sh- eye. Nick, share the shit going. out of this because this is absolutely like what the hell is going on? I don't I don't know what's happening anymore. Han Solo's having a housewarming. Yep. And um so shit. Luke uh explains to us what happened to Jabba's palace after Jabba died. Oh please. 
<laughs> it was repossessed by the government of Tatooine. Because Tatooine apparently has a government. Um, and they turned it into the Tatooine retirement home for aged <laughs> aliens. <laughs> No, no way. I shit you not. Joking. This is page five of this book, by the way. What? The... Wait, 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 wait. This okay. is my favorite one. Okay. <laughs> this is not real. There is. So it's it's a it's a retirement home. This for place aged of aliens. debauchery. And this place what? of horrible aliens. Why is why is it all so mundane? But <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, please. There wasn't enough money in the budget to keep it open, so it's since shut down. <laughs> one year? One year. They had one year. They were just they, Look, they, the, they had too many of those been Tatooine's government is there, terrible. Like, they they have horrible accountants. They can't budget anything to save their lives. I literally can't believe this. <laughs> I, I refuse. <laughs> this Nick, I love you so much. <laughs> Nick's great. No, Alex, this is the EU, really. <laughs> yep. This oh, used to be yes. canon. Boba Fett kills Boba, kills Bib, and runs. Yes. Yes. Make the Tatooine Please retirement let... home for aged aliens. Could canon. you imagine if that was let canon? That... Let that be what the. Please let that be what Book of Boba Fett is all about. It's just oh, like it's oh, it's oh, like oh, a oh, list oh, of elderly oh, people he has to take care of now. Him and Finnick. Yep. And this is all it's because no Finnick. one could find Jabba the Hutt's will. Finnick, so. it's, time, it's time to give Mr. Anderson a sponge bath. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anderson. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't find Jabba's will, so that's why that happened. Um, Ken drops the exposition that he all... Uh, Jabba also owned Holiday Towers Hotel and Casino in Cloud City. Well, that would make Because, sense. of course, Ken is an expert on Jabba the Hutt's real estate. Right, because what 12-year-old boy who lives at 12 they Jedi Lane Fest, And they pick up a housekeeping droid named KT. Am I you back? Cut out. No, you cut oh, out. You're cutting, out. you're cutting out. Sorry, okay. sorry. Go, uh, go back. Sorry. Go back to Ken being an expert on Jabba's effing real estate. <laughs> yeah. Because, because he looked it up in the, the Jedi archives. <laughs> Is that a 13 Jedi Lane? <laughs> 12 Jedi Lane. Oh, right, right, right. right, oh, right, right. Come on, Jerry. Get with the program. Well, I, no, that's yeah. where he lives. He doesn't live at the archives, right? Yeah, um, but he lived in the lost city of the Jedi. <laughs> but <it's still laughs> from having him. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Ah, that's good. Um, okay, so another acronym. Oh, no. Um, they find an HSD, which is a housekeeping specialist droid. Of course. Uh, Clearly, and this guy's got he's like, I'm gonna write this down. This <laughs> droid is named KT18. Okay. KT18. Okay, okay. But she insists on being called Kate. That's good. That's not As bad. You would. Um, As that's you would. not bad. It's not the worst. I thought it was gonna get really bad, but no. I mean we've already got the retirement community, it can't get much worse than that. I'm like, like I'm cleany, um, I'm cleany McCleanerson. <laughs> and then C3PO out of nowhere gets really oh, no. sexist. <gasps> Does he really? What? I'm gonna read his line ver verbatim from page eight. Oh, oh you have God. it here first. Sexist C3PO, everyone. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Excellent micro circuits, 3PO declared. Superb mobility, too. It's rare to find a female droid who's been manufactured with such quality. <laughs> That is a sick burn, 3PO. Like, what an asshole. That is incredible. 3PO. 3PO. Stop thinking about her motivators. She has thoughts and feelings, sir. Dang, 3PO. He wrecked her. <laughs> yes. Uh. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys Cancel. have to be tweeting. Hashtag. You guys, can you put a tweet out there, guys? You got to put tweets out Cancel. there. I mean, as Pete Fletcher likes to say, C3PO is a monster. That's true. Uh, why, where is Pete? Where is Dad? When oh we, God, where, where is, is Pete? Daddy? We need where's him. certified Daddy. <laughs> uh, so Good then Lord. some Tuscan Raiders attack, and so they just hide in the sand crawler, and they just—that's it. <laughs> There's no action. They just hide in the sand crawler. Is that really? 
It's like, oh really no. So so there is sexism and veiled racism. Like, oh hi, here come here come the sand people. Yes. <laughs> um, we just don't want to they're gonna ask us for money. It's gonna be bad. I just stand here. So Jabba's father, Zorba the Hut, now shows up. <laughs> oh, Jabba's me. dad. I did not realize yes. it was Jabba's dad. Oh, that's sick. So Jabba's Zorba. Zaddy. I will, I will show off an image in case anyone doesn't know. He's a big hut with a braided beard and braided He's hair, beautiful. which kind poor of Drew Struzan had to draw. Look, it's, <laughs> it's basically it's basically Thor from Endgame. Yes, uh, but but you know, Matt. anyway, sorry. Uh, so Zorba just got out of prison. <laughs> And he uh, he's coming to visit his son Jabba that at his home. There's my son Jabba. <laughs> oh, I hope he talks about that. I mean, in Legends, he is technically Zero's brother, so. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> so he goes up to, to Jabba's uh, palace, and the little doorknob thing just tells him to go away. Papa Hut. <laughs> and tells him that Jabba doesn't live there anymore. Um, so Zorba waddles down to Moss Eisley to get some answers as to what happened. Damn, that's a far walk. It is, especially for a hut. I don't even know how he moves. Anyway, so is he? With the, see, I, I'm really. He doesn't have like anyone to like take him like on a sail barge or something. Well, he just got out of prison. Oh, I forgot to mention his ship is called the Zorba Express. <laughs> I do have an image that I need to show on the screen if if it's that's okay. Please it's show. It's got my brain it's got my brain wandering about what Jabba's retirement committee would look like and I have rendered an image. <laughs> <laughs> look at this is top tier bomb bad cast. Oh. <laughs> I just want to put this out and be like does anyone understand this? In the words of Matt McCallum, Matt Martin, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to really I'm, exactly. I will post this and ask you gotta, Matt Martin. You gotta put, you've got to put like the the Ben Stiller character from Billy Madison, oh, yeah. like behind him or something. Oh. Like, pushing, like he's pushing him off a cliff or pushing him to that flow frog monster. It's unbelievable. So he goes like, into the Moss Eisley oh, canteen. Looks like you just got a whole week's worth of trying to keep the frog monster from eating all our shit. <laughs> uh so Zorba goes to the bar uh and he sees a wanted poster that says wanted by emperor trioculus a jedi oh. prince named ken from the lost city of the jedi generous <laughs> reward <laughs> nick generous reward yeah it doesn't say how much he's worth it doesn't give a description it's just ken lost city of the jedi generous reward we have his notebook we know where he lives yeah. Exactly the <laughs> proof we need. Well, no, they were never able to find the lost city, so Trioculus never discovered where it was. Oh, damn. Um, oh. But he still wants Ken found. Oh my gosh. And it turns out that none other than Grand Moff Hissa himself was the one putting up this poster in the bar. Wait, wait, wait. He's putting up the poster himself? He's there in the bar telling bounty hunters about it. It's kind of implied that he was the one putting up posters. Oh, man, how, oh far, my God. how far the mighty have fallen. He's oh like that kind of one of those things. Like he's have like little like things you pull off or something, whatever. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I know what you're talking about, Jerry. <laughs> and so, um, also Zorba uh, starts hiring bounty hunters here after. Yeah. Uh, because. Hiss is like, yeah, Jabba's dead as hell. Like, and he tells him about how Leia killed him. And so Zorba swears revenge against Princess Leia. And he um, hires a bunch of bounty hunters to go break into Jabba's palace. Um, and he pays everyone in gemstones. Sick. Because his that as was his, does. Yeah, he never ass. pays with credits, you, he just flings gemstones. It doesn't matter what kind they are. You could put those on the glove of Darth Vader. Right, right. Yeah, and then yeah. you you can uh, yep. snap there half of reality out of existence. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, they go Wait, there to the Zorba Express. I need more gemstones. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to mention the bounty hunters there are coming up with their terrible uh, like fan theories as to who Ken is. No way, because they're like, "Huh, Ken? Could he be a relative of Obi Wan Kenobi?" Shut up. I don't is know why they know K him as Obi Wan on Tatooine when he was known as a very Ken earthly. 
is it a very earthly K E N? Yes. Like Ken. Yeah. Like Ken doll. Like Barbie and Ken. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> this is unreal. Uh, two guys. N's. Like. <laughs> Uh, okay, so they, on, sorry. Uh, Zorba gets a new right hand man who's this bounty hunter named Tibor. Um, and he uses his anti orbital ion cannon to blow <laughs> open Jabba's palace's door, which seems like it sounds like it'd be a much stronger weapon than it apparently is, but it just breaks the door down. Anti orbital, yes, cannon. or ion cannon, yeah, anti orbital ion cannon, and it's portable. That is uh, good to know. That's that's good what to you know. want to look for. I was really that's worried want, for a moment. That's what you that's what you look for in a quality ion weapon. <laughs> yeah, especially an anti-orbital one. <laughs> yes. Um, so <laughs> they go in and they find this old droid, and uh Zorba says, Yes, this one has JTHW. <laughs> JTH- Another acronym, which JTHW stands for, stands for Job of the Hut's Will. <laughs> A T H W Jabba the Hutt's will. Why don't they just write that out? They're lazy. Because, they have, they're making money. Well, they're you gotta, money. you gotta, uh, uh, fluff out the page count. And so <laughs> you have to give an acronym and the explanation. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> um, so now we move on to chapter three, which is literally called Han Solo's housewarming party. <laughs> No, I'm not even. I'm not. Why are we surprised? Again? Yeah, I'm not, I didn't even have a reaction to that one. <laughs> what, what what kind of I mean, hors d'oeuvres been, are served? Is what um, I want to know. I'm interested in the hors d'oeuvres. Is there a charcuterie board? Well, before we get there, Han or Luke, okay. rather. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Luke is still dealing with uh, whatever's going on on Tatooine. <laughs> yes. Um, I kid you not, in <laughs> preparation to this. I looked up a review of the glove of Darth Vader and I found a four star review from 2016 that said the force awakens should have taken it from this oh. expanded universe content. And I Holy know it's shit. not a troll because it I... wasn't five stars. It was only four. Right, right, right. <laughs> they they're, but they're realistic. They're realistic. I love what the, the, the lazy hippies. Wrote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lazy hippies. <laughs> so, we get more mundane nonsense in this book, which is some of my favorite stuff in the Jedi Prince books. <clears throat> um, Luke is trying to go. Uh, oh, damn. I was going to make that shirt. Okay, Nick. You got, yeah, you got one. On this, is, this is so bomb at Kess property, Nick. Don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. Yeah, Nick. Well, um, I don't know. I guess we need to We need to, We need need to. to make sure that Michael we'll split gets, the royalties. He's, he's the guy. He's the guy. He's the guy. Um, after the, the Tuscans go away, uh, Luke tries, to, uh, uh, he hits a ride with the, uh, the Jawas back to Moss Eisley. And he uh, he can't get the land speeder back. So I'm just going to read this paragraph verbatim. Okay. Okay. There wasn't even anyone on duty at the land speeder rental desk. Luke left a note explaining that due to a sudden attack by Tuscan Raiders, he was forced to leave the land speeder at the droid fest. He hoped the Tatooine Planetary Insurance Company would cover expenses for getting it back to Moss Eisley. If not, they could bill him on Yavin 4, care of Spin, the Senate Planetary Intelligence Network. So not that only does Tatooine have a government, it has a planetary insurance company. I'm shocked. Alex, you missed, yeah, you missed, you came in just at the beginning. Droid Fest. Droid Fest. Yeah. D- d- uh, can that paragraph needs to be on a t-shirt that entire <laughs> paragraph needs to be on a t-shirt <laughs> he 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 talks so he did was it was it state moisture farm or something that he Probably. contacted <laughs> let me I'm ask you this I'm, too i'm proud of that Wait, i'm proud of that. where where in the book are we like in, in terms of percentages like are we like we are 20 pages in shut up <laughs> This book has so many memes, Scotty. It is insane. I'm I'm almost disgusted at this point. <laughs> I really am. I'm just like I'm in shock. I really am. How is this not more popular though? Yeah, I, I, know, I agree. I can't popular. believe that I struggled this is, with this. Like, this is this is this is the the mystery science theater three thousand 
of of Star Wars books right here. This is and like keep in mind, I'm watch. only hitting the highlights of this book. I'm skipping no, over a lot of stuff. Like, good lord, I'm gonna read these. Um, <laughs> so they get attacked by bounty hunters and they deal with them immediately. It's a complete non-issue. And uh, Ken Tor- has some Torby secret or whoever. What was that? Is it Torby or whoever? I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. Uh, it is uh just a uh, i think it's a twi'lek and an aqualish so <laughs> oh hold Timor on, hold is on, still with zorba hold on nick, no 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 third nick, book. You sweet summer child we are in the third book by now sir we are in the third book if this is all the first book i would have left <laughs> i think scotty would have had a I, really, I really i would have left i can't believe this tattooing um, insurance company <laughs> So Ken explains that he knows some secret information about Trioculus, and that's why they're after him. Um, but he oh. refuses to tell Luke why, and Luke's like, yeah, I get it, bro. And th- that's just <laughs> the end of the conversation. Um, so they finally go to Bespin. for. Yeah, my dad tried to kill me and turn me to space Satanist one time, so that's yep. cool. You're cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he, they go to Bespin, and they meet up with Lando. And uh, now we get into this book's environmental message. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, which is pollution. <laughs> because there is a brown haze that they call braze that's all over Bespin. Braze. Because of Trioculus's <laughs> weapons factory barge. Bra- braze? Yes. <laughs> braze. And so. Um, the entire planet is brazed. So Lando's <laughs> talking to them about it. And he's. I'm going to read Lando's line here because this is just hilarious. <laughs> I sent him two messages asking him politely to please shut down and go away. <laughs> Are we sure that this wasn't written by the artificial intelligence that writes the band the first stuff? I agree. This I think you might be on. Level. It's a time traveling AI that wrote this. This is so close to the band the first stuff. It's, it's not even funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> man uh okay so they go to the the housewarming party um an admiral akbar is there <laughs> and he's, of course he's described as this time as the sad-eyed calamarian fish man <laughs> um and he's apparently a huge downer at this party <laughs> keep talking well, about you, military you strategy and everyone just kind of wants him to go away you got sad fish eyes. I mean, come on. Sad fish eyes. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so they get a band there, and Leia's there, and a bunch of Han's <laughs> old Corellian fa- friends. Of course, of course. Um, and Han. Uh, tell me, tell me, we got a band name though. This, this is all at, uh, This is all Han's housewarming party, correct? Correct. Um, we don't get a band name. <laughs> We do get a dance name. Oh, Jesus oh Christ. shit. Han even taught Leia how to do the space pirate boogie. Wait, 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 wait. The space pirate, what you cut out? Boogie. Oh. God, this makes me sick. Nikes. <sighs> Are you okay, Scotty? You're going to make it? I'm I'm just blown away with the fact that, <laughs> that space- this actually truly exists. And this is not like... <laughs> Like you said, Banthaverse yep. written. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm can you imagine away. that? Can you imagine that? The Han Solo, Harrison Ford, from you know, the the guy who said Harrison Ford who said you can you can write this shit, George. You can't say it. Can you imagine him? No. Saying space pirate boogie, Han Solo would be embarrassed to even say those words. Yep. <laughs> space. Uh, he then gets the band to play a song called uh, Sweet Lady from Alderaan uh, because he <gasps> thinks it'll how make Leia happy, but she immediately starts crying because it reminds her of how her home planet and everyone she knew and loved died. <laughs> oh, Han, Han, you, you, Han, you sweet summer child. You. That's beautiful. <laughs> He's been too busy building his own dream house that he forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go on. So... Uh, then Ken accidentally ends up talking to Akbar for a bit, but he gets the droids to start talking to him instead, so he doesn't have to deal with them talking about military strategy. So Akbar is just basically like he's that dude from Animaniacs who no one wants to talk to. Like, yeah. I'm, that's a really obscure reference. I'm sorry. <laughs> Holy shit! 
Um, and they look out the window and they, uh, I think they're testing out like Han got like binoculars as a gift or something. Um, <laughs> And so they look outside and they see the Zorba <laughs> Express flying to Cloud City. <laughs> Julie, you know how much. Sh- thanks, Chewie. You know how much I love binoculars. <laughs> you know how much I, I love bird pair. watching. <laughs> uh, so Zorba shows up to the Holiday Towers and Casino with Jabba the Hutt's will. Um. <laughs> And I'm going to read what it says uh, verbatim. I can't stop laughing. I'm sorry. Go on. It's all good, Jerry. These are this, this is some ridiculous shit. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> good Lord, my oh my abs are burning. I didn't know they were still there. <laughs> <laughs> Before you read that, I have another image I, I would like to show. Oh, please do. Oh, please do. Please good do. Lord. <laughs> this is the only way I can actually listen to this because this is so batshit crazy. <laughs> Look at what they're watching. This is the greatest thing ever made, Scotty. This is my new wallpaper. Look at what they're watching. Oh, my Lord. It's so sad. (laughs) Sweet lady of all the red. Sweet cherry wine. (laughs) Oh, guys and gals. So, Jerry, I can't believe this. After hyperfocus earlier this week. That this uh, book creates continuity issues with the Clone Wars movie. Oh no! Oh God. yeah, what? I remember what? you mentioning that. What? <gasps> because Jabba's will says, "Since I have no wife or children, if I should die before my dear father, then everything I shall own uh, shall belong to Zorba the Hut, including blah 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 blah." So is Rada now dead? I guess. <laughs> I mean, we don't see him, and I mean, we don't see him for the rest of the original trilogy. We don't see him, you know. But a lot of that, a lot of that, has to do with the fact that he wasn't created until two thousand and eight. That's also so, true. But so it's there's still that. Oh um, my lord! Oh. So Zorba's throwing a fit because he's like, "I own this place technically," and Lando's like, "Dog, you don't own this place. Chill out." <laughs> and so he's like, "All right, Zorba, I've seen you play Sabacc, and you're terrible. I will bet." Cloud City in a game of Sabacc against you. Shut up. Because, of course, this is the EU, so everyone plays Sabacc. Yep. Everyone and their brothers plays Sabacc. That's but the only game in the universe. If no Zorba wins, games. Zorba will not only take over Cloud City, but Lando has to leave forever. Oh. Um, no. So Zorba cheats by using his own deck, and... Uh, which has an ultraviolet light that marks all the cards because huts can see ultraviolet light. That's so all the cards cool. are marked so he can see them. I know it is actually a kind of a cool idea, but Lando that's should have known cool. that. That's like, so that's so ridiculously 90s sci-fi. So yeah, so he cheats to win, he wins every magic. hand, cleans out Lando, Zorba now owns Cloud City. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> I think that I think that I think Lando needs to stop betting his most prized possessions. He really does in Sabat games. That's, Even if I, he's got a Psylocke up his sleeve, man, it's just not going to work. I mean, he's he's lost the Falcon and Cloud City. I mean, good lord. So Han Solo's new housekeeping droid falls out of his sky house. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> and of so. <laughs> So Luke acts like Anakin in Attack of the Clones and takes his speeder down to intercept as she's falling. Um, and they stumble upon Trioculus's factory barge. And Leia is with him, and he's like, yo, we should go destroy that thing. And Luke's like, can we do it like another day, though? <laughs> like, I really don't want to do it on the day of Han's housewarming party. <laughs> It's, Han's been looking forward to this. It's like, what is this? Is this like an episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Or something. Like it it definitely feels like it. Look, um, look at all the braids. There's braids everywhere. This is unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> so they they go in and they start uh, messing up some stormtroopers, but uh, Luke and Leia get separated, um, and Luke has to get out of there because the room fills with poison gas or something. Um, yeah, so Leia gets captured. 
And uh, so we get more mundane nonsense now back at uh, Han's house, his sky house. Where I just love this. I, sky house is the official, like, it's I'm building a sky house. Han is showing off his uh, racing cloud cars. And uh, he's talking about how he wants to enter the cloud car racing finals. Why not? <laughs> Jerry. And he explains <laughs> that to, since to drive a cloud car, if you're a human. Wait, you cut out. It sounded Sorry, like, was, yeah. that, was that a Phantom Menace plot point? <laughs> Communication yeah. disruptions can be one thing. Invasion. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, okay, no, go, but, go um, again, go again. Cloud car races. What, what, yeah, what about so, it? Uh, Ken asks how old you have to be to get a license to drive a cloud car. If you're a human, you have to be 18. If you're an alien, you have to be 20. Jeez. Okay. Except for Biff's. Yeah, because xenophobia. Biff's, because they brain so big, they can get one at 10. Because they're up. big buttheads. Because they're big buttheads. So it's like Yeah. But every other alien species has to be 20. This is this reeks of people who just watched the original trilogy and were just like, ah, that, that one's got a big head. Yeah. That's gotta uh, be yeah, yeah. I agree. Um so uh Han gets a distress signal. I'm gonna read uh, Han's line verbatim, uh, which is very, very 90s. Luke sent us a distress call. They're in some kind of trouble. My beeper was turned off, so we didn't get the message until Chewie here checked the machine. <laughs> hey, Google, turn off the office lights. <laughs> I think Scotty just quit. Scotty just quit. Scott, Scott. So, no, it's Let fine. it be known. It's fine. That, uh, Han Solo's beeper was what finally did Scotty in. Han Solo and, and Chewbacca both have beepers, correct? Um, well, it just said that Chewie checked the machine. So, oh, the machine. Sure, I'm, I'm in, I'm in. Uh, I'm sure Scotty, Scotty will show up later. Maybe yeah. he's probably getting something. Who knows? I should I keep going? <laughs> I don't even know. I think he can hear us. I, I just don't know where he went. I just that. that I that, hope so because we're going to talk about more craziness. Um, Scotty, you so, don't want to miss this, bud. You don't want to miss. Han is like, all right, me and Chewie, we're going to go and fix this. Ken, you stay here. Don't mess with anything. <laughs> Ken immediately starts pretending to drive the cloud car and accidentally starts driving it, much like Anakin Skywalker in the Phantom Menace. Stay Mace. in that cockpit. Stay yep. in that cockpit. Scotty, you're missing the, you're missing the best stuff. I've heard so all of this. I've literally heard <laughs> all of this. It's all in my ear. I need to take a walk around the block so I can process this. Because the fact that there is a beeper in Star Wars and that they went to voicemail is the most insane Star Wars thing of not Star Wars thing I've heard. Are you are you sure that it's not that that Jabba the Hutt's palace was used for le less than a year as a? I love how how sad Scotty's just walking around. It's so <laughs> specific. And so Ken, as he's driving, immediately gets pulled over by the cops. Oh my god. <laughs> and he gets arrested. The cloud cops. Uh yeah, the cloud city. Uh no, they're called the cloud police. <laughs> uh, oh my bad. Excuse me. Yeah. Show some respect for the cloud police. Yeah, the thin cloud line. There you go. <laughs> um meanwhile, Trioculus was, I guess, at the weapons factory because they bring yes. Princess Leia to him. And he's horribly burned now, and he's wearing the replica glove. <laughs> um, is it, this is a year. Uh, this is still a year after, uh, right? This all yes. takes place a year after. These books all take place after. in very close proximity to one uh, another. Return of the Jedi. Yes. Um, Leia calls him an inhuman monster, uh, <laughs> and Trioculus says, "Is it so wrong to be a murderer or a liar or an inhuman monster?" I may be all of these things, but I still have a heart. Frankenstein. It's a Mary dark Shelley heart. Would be proud. Oh, uh, Leia would be so proud. So you were pretty close, Jerry. Leia's follow-up line is, your heart is as dark as carbonite. 
Oh, Ooh, shit. That's a good um, burn. Trioculus then immediately proposes to her. Uh, <laughs> Shut up. He says, I love you, Le- Leia. I want you to marry me and become the queen of the empire. He's a true romantic, you see. I uh, offer you my dark hand in matrimo- in dark yeah. matrimony. <laughs> my dark burned hand. Uh, but she <laughs> turns him down. Big surprise. <laughs> Ew, uh, like your hand is totally burnt. <laughs> so Zorba is now chilling in, in his penthouse. <laughs> I think well, Scotty he, is too, Will. Of course, of course. Um, the cops come to Zorba and they're like, hey, we arrested this kid named Ken. And Zorba remembers the posters. And he's like, bring that kid to me right now. Wait, 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 <laughs> we're wait, gonna, wait, wait. We're going to talk Z- this out. Zorba's, is Zorba's penthouse on Bespin? Yes, because he now owns. He's now the governor of Clad City. Right, so, yeah. right, 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 right. I forgot Duh. all the. I forgot insurance and all that. So they bring Ken to him, and Ken doesn't want to answer any of his questions because you know he's a hot. Uh, but according to this book, um, old huts like Zorba knew a lot about human child psychology, which is maybe the creepiest thing I've ever read in a Star Wars book. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I just I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why I'm even I don't know why I'm uh, even asking why cuz Han Solo has a freaking beeper. <laughs> so, he then Zorba's like, "Hey kid, you hungry? I'll give you some candy." I mean, he yeah, he laces yeah, some some candy with truth oh, and give, oh. gives it to Ken and Ken eats it. No, uh, and admits yes, to being a Jedi like Barbie prince. Nick. And so now Zorba's, and uh, so now Zorba knows who he is, and so he calls up Trioculus, and he's like, "Hey, come pick up this kid. We're gonna make a deal." Uh, <laughs> William. So <laughs> Trioculus, <Dr. Hutt>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Trioculus goes and visits Ken in his cell. And we learn now that Trioculus's third eye apparently gives him mind reading powers. Of course, this is the first and only time Just it's ever mentioned. Time, right? Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's a third eye. It's it's. I mean, that's the '90s was wrought with like Miss Cleo and like all these like psychics and stuff, right? So yeah, sure, of course. And of course. You know, Ken uses the Force to cloud his mind so Trioculus can't read it. And this is the first time we get any indication that Ken is even force sensitive. It's never mentioned once. But he can use it to Twelve Jedi Lane. Mind. Yeah. I live a 12 Jedi Lane, mother. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? What does this remind mm. you of? <laughs> yes. It just it just feels like one of these. It's wow. a Star Wars. <laughs> they that's all they were doing. That is all they were doing is Star Wars Mad Libs. We, This is why we, we love to you. do we've got to do another Mad Libs episode soon. Anyway, anyway. Um Good lord. So so he's trying not to tell anything to Trioculus, and then Tibor is like, hey, you want another piece of candy? And Ken's like, well, I am pretty hungry, and so he eats it again. <laughs> I love that. No one eats candy when they're hungry. I just love the logic behind that. I'm hungry. We eat some candy. And so so he admits to Trioculus that he's the Jedi Prince. Um, Whatever the hell that means. He The big truth that he knows is the information we already knew. That Trioculus is not Palpatine's son, and for whatever reason, <laughs> Ken thinks he can't tell this to the Rebel Alliance. Um, so Ken or not the hell, Ken? Ken? Um, Trioculus. No, we also get uh, one fact about Triclops now. Great. The reason that Triclops has been kept alive is because he, while he dreams, he dreams of like weapon designs. Kind of and cool. he like mumbles them out in his sleep, so they just write it down and make these. Fights. I actually kind of like that's kind of like Martian Rowe, cool, honestly. Kind of like Martian Rowe and uh, the, the lady he has held captive, Triclops. Like okay, that is exactly like a plot point, not not the weapon design, but that the Emperor talks in his sleep. Yes, is, is in Good Night, Darth Vader, the book that I read to my four year old daughter. No, no way. Lie. Yes, <laughs> they, they, you have a couple of like uh, royal guards listening to the, the emperor like talk in his sleep. Yep. No lie, that's sick. Um, <laughs> oh, well, I'm gonna do some research in a second. It does look pretty nice. 
Um, now, see, I, so, just, I, just question, I just question Han Solo wanting to build a dream house right after Return of the Jedi being yep. even a plot point. What's the uh, piping? So like? he... Sorry. <laughs> they just <laughs> dump it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a gas giant. Who cares? Uh, yeah. So Trioculus negotiates with Zorba. And he's the worst negotiator ever. Zorba is like, all right, I'll give you can on two conditions. One, you got to take your weapons factory and get off Bespin. And Trioculus literally says, a little braze never hurt anyone. <laughs> but Zorba's like, I mean, it's driving away tourists. You got to get this thing out of here. It's Tri quite nice with a good roast. but Yeah. A little braze never hurt anybody. And Trioculus is like, all right, what's, what's condition number two? And Zorba says, give me Princess Leia. I'm going to kill her. Oh, and Trioculus wow. says, absolutely not. That is my queen. He starts simping hard for Ooh, Leia. This is, this is pretty queen, good. I like show this. me the way. <laughs> Literally. Um, and so he, he gets into a big argument with Zorba. And Zorba's like, uh, we will be enemies from this day on. And so Trioculus is like, not if anything to say about it, I have. And he calls in his stormtroopers. Zorba calls in the police. And there's a big shootout. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to point out that our heroes so far in this book, all they have done is accidentally stumble upon a weapons factory. And the only thing that has furthered the plot is Trioculus and Zorba. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, even if you read these, you won't understand what is happening, but these are, this will enlighten you. So I yeah, highly recommend like it. it. I want the we'll audience enlightened. Want Mark Thompson. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Uh, so Zorba gets hit a few times, but his skin is just so thick that it just slightly burns oh. him and he doesn't care. Sorry. <laughs> no, it'd be like I, I'm only, I'm only reacting in videos to this point. <laughs> We're in like the last 10 but, pages of this book now. So. Oh my God. I'm, I'm dying. I'm on pins. Oh and pins. shit. Um, How does this one wrap up? So, so insane. the cloud police completely overrun trioculus's stormtroopers and trioculus okay. is taken prisoner by zorba okay oh. okay uh what zorba is? then freezes him in carbonite okay go ahead and handle it and hangs him up in the cloud city museum that's wildly inappropriate and he's just like it's fine the empire <laughs> <laughs> So our big villain Trioculus, all he has done in this book series is go blind, get horribly burned, and now get frozen in carbonite. <laughs> hung up in a museum. Yep. <laughs> um, Ken then oh, uses the Jedi mind trick on the guard to get out of his cell, and then oh, mind tricks cool. a taxi driver into thinking he's paid for his ride. Okay. <laughs> he gets back to Han's house. It's so mundane. It it's is. so mundane. Um, Luke then s finds out that Leia's in the penthouse, and so he just breaks a window and gets her out. <laughs> uh, and then they just go away, and they're like, Boy, that was weird. Glad we got out of there. Um, and then Gordon's <laughs> forces show up and blow up the factory, and they think they've killed Leia. Um, and then as uh, simple bait and switch, simple bait and switch, very simple. Yeah. And then Han's like, maybe we shouldn't be here. If Zorb is here. Cause you know, he kind of wants you dead and he thinks you're dead. So let, let's just leave my house. Um, and then he starts thinking about marriage and that's, that's just the end of the book. No way. That's it. Our heroes did absolutely nothing in this book. Like true. No, like literally nothing like yeah. at nothing at all. They just stumbled upon the weapons factory. Um, and then they just kind of left. They stumble upon a weapons factory and they leave. And, and who is thinking about marriage? Han. Han's like, maybe Han, I should settle get, down. I got my dream house. <laughs> There's nothing a boy, a boy dreams about more than his fairy tale wedding. His fairy tale yep, wedding. And his sky oh. house. So boys, I gotta thing. ask: Have these books met your expectations? They've exceeded them, and I, like in every way, honestly, the <laughs> the third one is the one that has truly taken taken Star Wars to a new level for me. 
and I actually but, have a deeper appreciation for for what we what we have now. And I mean, but that. but 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 you can't you can't go straight from you can't skip Glove of Darth Vader and what was the second one? Lost I'm City. Sorry, Jedi. Lost City on those. Twelve Jedi Lane. You can't skip those. You have to like you go back and watch this entire two hour monstrosity. Yeah, over to Michael, oh my lord. You really did handle this like a professor, like a college friend. You you had your facts straight. You you I Admiral felt notes. like I felt like just completely in the moment with you every time you said something because honestly, I'm not joking. Everything you said just elevated with each remark. Because like, sure, the retirement community thing is I think to me where it peaked, but like even <laughs> past that. Is insane. I, I think the, that's just the, that's the point at which you were just like you, you were like like doe eyed, just like oh yes. what? To what? be fair, <laughs> I do have really good material to work with here. This definitely did help a lot, but <laughs> show the other show the other one. Please show the other one. I love it. And you're getting on to me for using my phone. Look at the giant <laughs> that giant wood. The the that that wood encased television. That's that's beautiful. Good Scotty. lord! I'm gonna I'm seriously gonna make that my wallpaper. Like I'm, well, I'm gonna send it to you. I'll I'll message you on Twitter. Uh, and we, just... we have to post these pictures. Oh, oh we will. We will. There's there's oh, things I've learned in this one thing for Michael, and it's that there needs to be a part two. Michael, are you free next week? I am indeed. Michael will be returning next week to finish out this series because I'm not joking. The fact that it got this like elevated to me, Michael, does it does it does it stay elevated? Does it like continue to to climb the ladder of or the stairwell of insanity? Can I can I give a tease for one of the things we'll be? By God, next week? please! Oh, please! Oh, please! please. And we we will be at regular time next week. By the way, by yes, the way, guys. So eight, like uh, yeah, nine nine p.m. Go ahead. Three go words. Ahead. Three words. Hologram fun world. Good God, man. Damn it, Jim. Y'all thought Trioculus was crazy. Wait till he gets a hologram fun world. Hologram. There's actually, okay. The, I think hologram fun world comes back in the, in the galaxy of fear series. Does because, it really? Like, there is, there is, there is a galaxy of fear book where the characters in that book who are not related to any of galaxy of fear is actually really good. They meet Lando Calrissian in a hologram theme park. No effing lie. I think, I think we may have found a genuine connection to these books, guys. Oh, that's, that's pretty close. Cool. Well, that's my. That's one question I do have for you, by the way, because I'm I'm curious. Okay. Yes. Has any of this been recanonized to a certain extent? Like some aspects of it? Do you know? Not. Really, aside from that really, hologram okay. fun world connection we just made, okay, that would not be that I can. I'll and, try and to find which one it is, but you, arguably yeah. the whole Triclops is Ray's father thing, maybe. That'd um, be so badass, That'd be and so Snoke, cool. of course, Snoke. Yes, Snoke, of course. You're right. You're right. Okay, okay. Um, I just hope we get this. Snoke Larone. <laughs> Snoke Larone. I, that sounds like some dude who stands outside of a space high school smoking cigarettes. Honestly. That's Snoke <laughs> when he's wearing like his hat and stuff in the Maxine station. Yes. Oh, Kylo. hey, hey, Kylo, Ben, whatever your name is. Hey, yeah, it's you me, Snoke Larone. Snoke Larone. You know what I love about high school girls? They stay the same age. <laughs> oh. Michael. Good we God. are delighted to have you on again mm -hmm. because this has, been a blast. There, this has to be continued, right? This Sh is, oh, yeah. this share been, this, guys. This has been oh. an absolute blast. I'm not kidding when I say this has been one of my favorite episodes, only because <laughs> you were guaranteeing how weird it would get, and it a thousand percent delivered. And I'm so it thankful got it got so much weirder than I even like again. Way weirder. I I knew a little bit about like Glove of Darth Vader. I even think I knew a little bit about the second book. But to just the, like I forgot about Han Solo's Sky House, and that it's called it's literally called in the book a Sky House, correct? Yep, oh it's Sky House because Lando leased him lasts, a good piece of sky. It's a plot point that lasts three books. Oh, if it keeps going, I love that. And it's a it's a build up <laughs> until he has the effing party. <laughs> 
It's the only consistent through line that isn't trioculus. Like, oh my lord, I love it. <laughs> this is this is one thing I will say. This is how I feel watching this. This is how I feel Michael explaining it to me. I am hooked. <clears throat> Binge watching The Mandalorian. Oh my god. Easy with that. Unbelievable. You take it easy. It's on Disney. Check it out for yourself. I actually think it's better than the Star Wars movies. Just great. Just great. Just great. This, uh, oh my this, god. Uh, I love the <laughs> And Nick wasn't around for the entire. He left in the middle. This yeah. he thought we were still on the first book when he came back. This makes backstroke of the West look like Empire, Empire Strikes Back. You aren't. You aren't just whistling F and Dixie, no. man. Man, You're I would not. love oh, for shit. someone to backstroke of the West, like make a this? backstroke of the West version of these books. Too much. That would be oh. too much. <laughs> we need to do a table read. Too much. Of these yes. Books. We need to do a table read of Backstroke of the West, but we need to do a table read of these books. Holy shit. That would be incredible. Can you can I, you imagine? I just want Mark Thompson to do it, man. I want to hear what his trioculus sounds like. Can you imagine? <laughs> Han Solo's effing peeper. <laughs> I, I want to say this, okay? Uh, and and I want to say how thankful I am for Michael to be the 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 possessor Harbinger of this knowledge. Of this yes, you it, are you are the Jocasta new. Of Jedi Prince. Th if it's this, not in the if files, it is not it in the Jedi exist. Prince books, it does not exist. It exists. Exactly. Guys, make this make this popular. Share this. Make this popular because this seriously, this deserves to be known. And oh buy my these gosh. books if you can. These are worth it a thousand percent. I think I might, I'm I'm gonna go on eBay right now and look. <laughs> go and buy them. Go and buy them right now. I want the acronym shirt. You know what? We might have to do an acronym shirt. We can make we one. Every we've got to and finish also, everything. I would like to say that if you want more in-depth coverage of each individual book, no. we've got those on my podcast, All Remaining Systems. Oh, go check my it God. out, guys. Go check out. Go check out All Remaining Systems. Seriously. If you haven't yet, what are you doing? I agree. Oh, my gosh. And oh, my gosh. That's some words from Paul before we depart. Michael, any final words? Um, sh Shall I say the final words? Is that or just? Oh, Let's play some videos, oh, and then I'll give you the absolute honor to say the final words. How that, that's how that whole episode has made me feel. Partying is cool. Dying is not. There's the Rickmeister. <laughs> Cause you're riding on the mountain of your own free will And you're zipping in a flash on a daring dash Down a waterfall so rapid that you go splish splash Splash mountain I'm beginning to think I, those aren't construction workers. I, and I got I, I an adult of me now. I, I don't, don't think they are construction like, workers. I, I, Scotty, we've got uh, to get we've got to get uh, Herman Cain singing "What if there was no pizza?" Oh, you're imagine awesome there's no pizza. <laughs> we got to add that one yes. back because we got it. We got it. And honestly, we've got to make like a, a playlist on our uh, YouTube, YouTube channel page I can for all of these. So, Michael, we have a tradition here. Every guest gets the honor of doing it when they depart. Um, you know, uh, bef before that, you know, you <laughs> say the, the phrase, I think uh, we have a physician. Our brains here. are broken. Our we have a physician broken. here that needs to suggest some some clinical Please, things right to make sure. So, uh, yeah, Dr. Joe, I think he has some final words. Joe. Anyways, my broskies, I got to bounce. Bounce on your boy's dick. Hey, got him. What should the wonderful people do? Michael? Love you, Nick. Stop. <laughs> Stay bombad. Stay bombad. Peace.